Welcome to Raiders TV. This is Florian Grein. We are here in Innsbruck and we're about to see one of the biggest games in Europe for, for the whole year. The Swarko Raiders Tirol will, fa will face the Benedictine College in Tivoli Stadium. And I'm very happy that I got the expert Tino van Eckert right next to me. And Tino, what do you think is going to be the biggest obstacle, the biggest challenge for the Raiders today? Compared to the league, they play uh, the AFL and the CFL. I think that every guy they line up across them is going to be faster, is going to be stronger, is going to be better skilled in playing their position. So I think they, the Raiders really have to play their A game to have a chance and stand up. So if you compare the college from last year, because last year we had the Elmhurst Blue Jays here to play against the Swarco Raiders. So what do you, what do you think? Is that kind of like the same level or is it going to be a little bit more difficult. Definitely a step up because an NAIA school has scholarship athletes, which the Elmhurst didn't have. So I guess they get a couple of more guys who can, you know, sh just shortly miss D, miss D1 college. So let's see. I'm eager. Yeah. All right. So we're going to look forward to it and good luck and have fun. And we'll see what's going to happen. Space over to the right side, breaks the tackle, is still running. And Kuhn goes with that unbelievably spectacular one-handed wow. grab. And he won't be caught from behind. Samuel Blansky will got some wheels. Welcome to the big show here in Innsbruck. Welcome everybody for the Raiders TV show where the Swarco Raiders will face the Benedictine College from the US of A. So uh, welcome to to my left side. I got uh, Tino van Eckert and a very warm welcome to you as well. <laughs> I'm happy to have you. you here. So um, for for the upcoming game, we're, we're looking forward to have a very, very good competition. And we'll see the weather is perfect, the stadium is perfect, the crowd will is coming in. And we're looking forward for a very, very good game. And I'm happy to see all the athletes compete. I want to take the time and thank all the partners for, the, for Raiders TV which is Football Austria, footballaustria.com, one of the partners. The other partner would be uh, Connection for the internet and everything else, Pilgerfilm, Eka Media. A very, very big thank you to all of these guys to make that happen and that we can all have the perfect view, the perfect uh, stream for all the football in Europe. Uh, to make sure this uh, the battle for Tyrol, this is the second, the third year in a row now that we're, we're the Raiders are hosting the battle for Tyrol. It's kind of like uh, everybody's playing. It's all friendly games, but it's for the pride. It's it's going. Uh, the award is going to be the helmet of the opponent team. So it's going to be very exciting, and everybody knows who, who's kind of like rely relate to football that the helmet is one of the most important things so it's all about the helmet in the battle for the role games and especially for these uh, US games like college games like last year with Elmhurst and this year with Benedictine it's about an experience for the Austrians for us to to just figure out how how good are we where are we standing and it's always a good competition just to see how we're gonna do against these guys so for, for last year's game, like I said, we, we played against the Elmhurst Blue Jays, and it was a very, very good game. We're expecting an even tougher opponent this uh, today, so we'll, we'll see what's going to happen there. And you can check out the highlights from last year's game.
That's full on wrestling style. Check that out. Thor. Oh no. His hammer broke. <laughs> Endo Madini coming in hot. What a character. to Ellsbacher, and who goes with the unbelievably spectacular one-handed wow. diving grab. So first and ten now. And he has Adrian Platzkoma in the end zone for a Sparkle Raiders touchdown. And fake handoff, look at the throw, and he goes deep, but he's covered by Dijon Washington, who goes up and high points the ball for interception. It's up, it's got yard the field distance, goal. and it's good. And it's to Shelton, and with the motion, and oh, and a botch snap. Going all the way up and back. Oh, and Fumble. he's hit and fumbled. And it's picked up by the Blue Jays. We saw a beautiful punt the first time. And this booming kick. kick. Wow. Great hang time, yeah. Time of Natsuma wants nothing to do with it. Oh, and what a great play. And look, they're able to hold up. Oh, and they get hit in the backfield. Oh. Safety, they're giving it, it to him. Wow. Well, he's open. He's, uh, he's got him, but his ball looks a little underthrown. He has to go back oh. to get it, but what a nice pick. What a beautiful play. Look at deep, but then decides once again to run it himself, and he breaks two tacklers out to the right side, and he's still on his feet and brings it in for a Sparkle Raiders touchdown. Look at this, right? And he airs it out There's deep, Callahan. and he's got Callahan. And he's able to make the real adjustment. Waxing from an emotion standing behind. And now they try what Pick. you said, a seam throw, but it's picked off. Tip wins, and he's still on his feet. Okay, fourth quarter is underway. Pumps it, tries to go deep to Callian, and a nice catch. Tip right. toe on the sideline. There's the rain coming, the lights are on. Rolls out to his left, looking for an open guy. Here's it out of the middle, and he gets behind both Whoa! DBs. And into the end zone. Wow! Garrett Claxon picking up the default and diving deep. Nice camera work here, too. They're doing just that, and they can do that. Milton Knox breaking off a nice one, stiff arming a guy, and he's off to the races on the right sideline before finally being chased out of bounds. Looking to his left side, going for the fade or a pass. Oh, what a catch. Good protection. The and defender he, had it. He, he just, just wanted it more. snatches it. He tried to throw it up the middle, but Jermaine oh, Ginn yeah. strips him. He picks it off, and he's off to the races. 44 is bringing it to the house. What a big play by number 44. Coming back. And that's it. The clock strikes zero. Yeah, so best wishes to Mr. Brewer. Quick recovery. For sure. More than, more than just that. Yeah. But um, if you like what you saw today, come back next week and check it out again. It's going to be another good one. Welcome back to Innsbruck and to the Battle for Tirol. Uh, we're going to introduce you to our head coach of the Sparkle Raiders Tirol, uh, Shuan Fatah. For those who don't know him, now you know. My name is Shuan Fatah, head coach of the Sparkle Raiders Tirol. Also ich bin vom Europameister damals sozusagen weg und dann ins Ungewisse. Aber es war eben auch nichts mehr zu gewinnen in Berlin. Wir haben eigentlich alles gewonnen gehabt, German Bowl, Austri äh, European Bowl, also Euro Bowl. Und da war dann einfach da noch die Luft raus und da äh, war eine tolle Mannschaft. Und wir hätten sicherlich noch viel gewonnen, aber dann war bei mir schon so die Idee, hey, mal was Neues sehen. Und die Swarco Raiders sind natürlich auch eine tolle Adresse. Und, äh, das war mir bewusst. Und dann, äh, ja, haben wir uns mit der Familie zusammengetan, haben gesagt, hey, wollen wir das machen? Wir müssen ja immerhin auswandern, das ist ja ein anderes Land. Und dann äh, wurde uns das aber so leicht gemacht vom, vom Management damals und von der Mannschaft, dass wir dann einfach gesagt haben, okay, let's go. 
lass uns, lass uns, uns, uns dann machen. Ja, ich kannte ja Innsbruck schon und das war schon, es, es ist natürlich ein Riesenunterschied. Du kommst aus einer Metropole, ich bin ja in Berlin geboren und aufgewachsen, das heißt, ich bin sozusagen ein richtiger Berliner äh, Junge ja, und habe da natürlich dann äh, eine große Stadt kennengelernt mit drei, vier Millionen Einwohnern und äh, die ganzen negativen, positiven Sachen, die, da, da, Sachen, die dann kommen. Und dann kommst du hier und hierher nach Innsbruck und das Leben hier ist sehr, sehr viel langsamer. Das ist aber, das ist aber auch schön, das macht auch Spaß und das hat mich natürlich sehr gereizt, mal aus diesem ganzen Hektik-Umfeld in Berlin wegzukommen. Man, man eröffnet dir die Zukunft hier, man will mit dir die Zukunft gestalten. Und das ist ein schönes Gefühl, gerade auch in Hinsicht der, der Dinge, die hier noch passieren werden, wie Trainingsgelände. Das sind natürlich Dinge, die ich gerne erleben würde. Als, ich bin jetzt mittlerweile in meinem siebten Jahr. Es wäre schade, wenn das dann irgendwann steht und ich, ich kann nicht daran partizipieren und kann da nicht äh, mit den Jungs drauf trainieren. Weil ich glaube schon, dass diese, diese Wege, die wir da gehen, äh, ein absoluter Meilenstein werden und uns einfach auch noch in ganz andere Ebenen katapultieren werden. einige Spieler ersetzen müssen. Das ist nach äh, fünf, sechs Jahren aber normal und ist auch eine, eine Motivation, äh, ist auch, motiviert uns sehr als Trainerstab. Äh, wir haben neue Gesichter im Team. Wir haben leider gute alte Spieler, mit denen ich gerne zusammengearbeitet habe, gehen lassen müssen. Aber das ist der Zahn der Zeit. Die Leute müssen eben auch ins normale Leben einsteigen, haben ihr Studium beenden, müssen arbeiten gehen. Das ist einfach Teil des Sports. Wir haben sehr, sehr gute junge Leute dabei und das wird sicherlich ein sehr interessantes Jahr. Ob wir jetzt so durch die Saison cruisen wie die letzten zwei Jahre, glaube ich nicht. Ich glaube, wir werden uns schwerer tun, aber wir werden auch daraus wachsen. Das wird trotzdem für uns eine gute Saison werden und weil wir immer noch viele Ecksteine im Place haben, viele gute Spieler im Kader haben und ich glaube schon, dass wir uns vielleicht nicht so leicht tun, manche Ergebnisse nicht so groß, großartig hoch sein werden, aber ich glaube schon, dass wir bestimmt Performance-Standard haben bei den Raiders, der uns immer wieder hilft, oben zu sein und, und äh, um mitzuspielen. Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Ganz, ein ganz wichtiges Motto für mich auch in meinem Leben, weil natürlich ich nicht immer der talentierteste, tief talentierteste war in allen Dingen, die ich gemacht habe in meinem Leben und äh, meine harte Arbeit mich dahin gebracht hat, wo ich jetzt bin. Und ähm, da bin ich sehr stolz darauf, weil nur Talent bringt dich nur so weit im Leben. Wenn du nicht gelernt hast, hart zu arbeiten und einen Preis dafür zu bezahlen, für die Dinge, die du dir wünschst, wirst du einfach immer scheitern. Das habe ich relativ früh erlebt und äh, für mich selber auch herausgefunden. Und deswegen ist das mein Motto. Another new addition to our coaching staff. There is Dan Morrison. He used to coach with uh, with Hawaii and then went to SMU. And he's a big, big resource for us this year. And we're very thankful that he came over all the way from Dallas to help out on the offense, offensive position as quarterbacks and receivers. Here's Dan Morrison. My name is Dan Morrison and I am the quarterback coach. I retired from uh, coaching the college level and uh, as I retired I was asked to join the USA National Senior National staff to, for the uh, World Championships in Canton, Ohio. And that was very interesting to, to be involved with international football. So I was always interested in, in football played internationally and uh, one of our staff members at SMU had actually been the head coach here in, in Innsbruck. And uh, he's the one that set up the clinics to come over. So I was very interested in uh, seeing it and seeing if it you know, made sense for 
you know, Innsbruck to bring me over. And as it worked out, I liked it here, and they asked me to come, and I was very excited about to come. I think the upside is that the players that we're dealing with here are playing the game because they really love to play the game. It, 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 you're playing, you guys are out there because they really like playing the game. Sometimes the money gets so crazy in the United States that players stop playing for the love of the game and they get more focused on contracts and their next contract and making so much money that they sometimes are not as, you, you don't get the same kind of real passion for the game. I don't know that America really understands how good they play here. So they may come over with a feeling that they're just coming to play somebody and it's just a game and they'll win and go home. And they don't understand that it's uh, much better football than they're maybe thinking it will be. And they'll be surprised when they get here uh, how good it is. And here's to our opponent, the Benedictine College. So you guys know where it all is. It's the very first time that Benedictine is playing for Battle for Tirol. And it's an a NAIA school. So this is, like we said before, uh, with scholarships and everything. So that's where it is. It's right in the heart, right in the middle of the USA, in between Kansas and Missouri. So if you go a little closer, you can see it's right there at the border. So it's close to Kansas City. And if we're going to take another peek, the field is right next to the Missouri River. So it's all safe. So it's all secure right in the middle of the USA. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, we, like we said before, it's, it's, it's hard to say anything about that team. We did an exchange. There, there was a video exchange. So there, the teams were able to watch film from another. And it's going to be interesting how it's all turning out. So about that, uh, Benedictine College, they finished third place last season. They had seven to four, that was a record, seven wins, four losses. And they play at the Heart of America Athletic Conference. Right now, we're gonna have another interview coming up with our offensive coordinator, the all-beloved Lee Rowland. He's, he, he came together with uh, Shuan Fatah in 2011 so that was the, f the first year and since then the both of them both of them were helping out the Raiders to be so successful like they are right now so we're here 48 hours before the game of the Ra Raiders against the Ravens um, I got Lee Rowland offensive coordinator in front of the camera the very first time ever that happened and it's always interesting to have a person here by my side who is kind of like the instructor the master of puppets for the Raiders offense one of the best in Europe and so I got a couple questions uh, one uh, we're facing the Ravens in two days so what is the approach how are you going to how can you prepare for a game like this when when you don't really know the other opponent? Um, we're preparing for it just like we would any other team. We've done a film exchange with them, so uh, they know us from film. We know them from film, although the film we've got is from last year and only their spring game. But it, we're preparing just like any other regular season game. So, so how do the players feel about games against American colleges are they excited are they nervous or is it just another game since the schedule is so tight every year no it's it's, it's they're excited about it that maybe a little bit nervous because they get to go against you know people from the from the where the game comes from and uh it, it's a college so anyone who plays at a college you know for them for our players it's a measure of how good we are uh, and that that's a good yardstick for us as coaches for the future so the, if you look at our roster this year, we had about 20 people who kind of decided not to, to play another year. So it, it, it would be almost a total different team from this year to last. How do you think the chances are to get like a good win? 
Well, the charges for us are always good. I mean, we, we, we don't, we don't uh, prepare to lose. We prepare to win. And so um, we've looked at the film. We've got a lot of young players. We want them to enjoy the experience, to, to get them ready for when, when, we, when we get to the late part of the season. They can look back on it and say, well, I've done that. So looking at the other teams, it's, it's going to be easy. So, and you, you yourself, as a coach, you have experience in, in coaching at college level as well, right? So, would you, back in the day where you were, where have you been at all? I was at Weber, which is a small school in, in Florida. Um, it, that was an NAIA team as well. And we played, we played the NAIA teams. We also played, uh, in our preseason, we played against the Citadel, which is a D1 team. So... You know, we got hammered, but it's an experience <laughs> that you learn from. So you think all these Americans, they would, they, they like in your team in Weber, would they would have enjoyed coming over to Europe and play one of the best teams in Europe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, especially the kids from Florida. I mean, they would have loved it. Um, whether they ever get that chance, I don't know. Um, but uh, for, for anyone coming to Europe and being able to, to see Europe and play the game, you know, that they, do, that they play, it, it's a good experience. So now we're going to try to figure out how can we beat their defense? How can we attack the defense and where are their strengths and weaknesses? Okay. Um, well, we looked at their film. We had two games from last season and their spring game. So they've lost people. There's seniors have graduated, so juniors and et cetera are moving up. So... Uh, when we look at their film, they, they've changed their defense slightly. So we, we have to prepare for basically two defenses, which is it's going to be uh, it's going to be tough to get it in in the limited amount of time that we have to practice. And what was standing out to me against Elmhurst last year is because they're from their age, they're a little young as well as so uh, body wise up front, the defensive line was a little skinny. For, for Elmhurst, is that the same thing with uh, with the Ravens now? Are they small as well, or are they bigger? No, they're bigger. They're they're pretty big. Okay. They they got some size. The thing that's gonna that's, that our our guys are gonna find different is the speed, the speed with which they play it, and, that, and that's always gonna be. Um, it, we it, we play fast over here. When you when you play teams, they say, "Oh, you're fast," but compared to the the game over there, it, the game is faster. Nice. So I think that's enough. Thank you very much. And we're going back to the game. As always, we pick and choose our featured players for today's game. Again, it's, it's, it's Sean Shelton. And before that, we're going to have the Ravens quarterback, Schaefer Schwitz, to talk about today's game. Schaefer. Welcome to Innsbruck. Been here a couple of days. First of all, why, why this trip? Why do you guys come over here? Well, you know, it's just an awesome experience, and really it's kind of an excuse for us to, to travel and see the world and see beautiful Innsbruck, Austria. I know I was telling you a little bit earlier, I mean, the mountains, you just can't beat them. It's, it's fantastic out here, and I know all the guys have had a great time in our short time that we've been here so far. Have you been able to practice on a regular basis over here, or did you just go sightseeing? Yeah, we've, we've done a lot of sightseeing for sure, um, but we were able to get a couple practices in, um, a couple quick ones, maybe not quite as long as, as we were wanting, but um, at the end of the day, we've, we've had a lot of fun and um, excited for the game. Okay, you guys just recently had your spring game. Mm -hmm. Would you say you're in a better shape now or with, you didn't bring all the guys, of course, right? Correct, yeah. I think, I think we've got 40 guys that made the trip. out of uh, We have about 150 back home. Um, and so not, not quite the entire team was able to make it out here, but... Um, a good group of guys we do have. I think we have our entire starting offensive line, um, a couple good receivers, and, and I think we'll be we'll be in pretty good shape. I feel like. What do you expect from the Raiders? Did you watch any film on them? Yeah, you know we've been very impressed. Um, didn't know really what to expect until we sat down and watched film. Um, a very solid team offensively, defensively. You know, just kind of the kind of the whole package. It looks like from our point of view. So definitely looking for a good competition and and excited to get out there. Well, then enjoy it and stay upright. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Sean, you finally get to play a U.S. college team again like every year. Uh, what do you expect this year from Benedictine compared to Elmhurst last year? Oh, I mean, they're going to be a, a step up, and that's the expectation, you know. Uh, they're consistently top 25 NAIA school, which uh, comparatively to the NCAA, maybe a Division II team. Uh, you know, these guys are scholarship guys, unlike Elmhurst, and, and so they're going to be bigger, faster, stronger, and probably equally well coached, if not better. And, and so we expect a good team, a really, really good team, and, and probably a step up from what we played last year. And your guys are banged up a little bit, and I mean, you had a not so nice game in Vienna last weekend. Is this kind of a redemption chance for the other guys to step up again? Yeah, I mean, every week is a redemption from coming off a game like Vienna, but uh, I don't think we view it that way. It's just, you know, kind of wash that clean. It happens. We play poorly. Uh, but yeah, this is the eighth game in eight weekends, and and mid-May for us, we're always going to be beat up, but we just look to, to play well with the guys that we got in, even though they might not be the most experienced guys. Uh, but just play well, and that's all we want to do every week, and th this week's no different. Well, then good luck in playing well and stay upright. I appreciate See it. I appreciate it. So, welcome back. Let's talk about the keys to a victory for the Ravens. Start off with the Ravens first. Tino, uh, what do you think? What's what's what, the, what are the keys to victory for you? Well, what we made up is, of course, for the Ravens, it's a different continent. They've been traveling in here. They are on a different time schedule, a jet lag maybe. They didn't have as much practice. So they're out of their comfort zone probably. And uh, they got to manage that to get that, get that going. Then, dominate the line of scrimmage. Easy one set for an offensive line coach. Um, as far as I'm aware, they brought their starting offensive line for the 2017 season. So that should be there. Team chemistry, they have 150 men on their roster. They brought 40. Who are these 40? How can they bound together in the short time? There are a couple of third, fourth stringers who've never seen the field to get a chance to play today, which is a huge opportunity for them, of course. So can these 40 guys be the dirty 40 kind of and, and make the Ravens uh, a real competitor? I believe so, and I'm looking forward to yeah. it. So what do you think about, you know, the quarterback situation, what they're facing? I mean, they, they, they got a new one, kind of, because you only got, like, a couple of reps last season. So I think they're going to use that trip to make him a little bit better, to get him in, in rhythm for next year. And that's, that's Schaefer for shits. What do you think? What, what can we expect from him? Um, can't really tell. I mean, he was the, the starter coming out of the spring game. Uh, he is probably the most experienced quarterback who is eligible for the 2017 season. Now, this is a great opportunity for him to practice under game conditions against a defense that he never sees again. Um, in the old days, we used to say over here in Europe, you can do it behind the bushes. As we two are now talking and everybody watches this in wherever this world, mm. it's not behind the bushes anymore. So, Schaefer Schutz, you better bring it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So, uh, let's go over to the Raiders. So, what is the key to victory for the Raiders? What is the most important thing for them? Well, we see here health issues. You could probably answer that better than I am because you're more familiar with the situation. I mean, I know that uh, Sandro Platzkomer is not going to play. Right. I mean, um, who else is missing? Can you? Yeah. The thing is, I mean, we got a couple. There are a couple of injured Raiders here, not playing today. And like Sean was saying, it's like a very, very, very tight schedule. You play week after week. Another opponent next week. It's Graz. Last week it was Vienna. So uh, we do have health is issues with the Raiders. There is a little bit banged up Sandro Platzkomer. Then we got uh, Gwyn. Uh, who's a little bit hurt as well, so we we just got to figure out. So I mean, like Sean was saying, we got to play with all the with the ones you got, and that's what comes down to what it comes down to. Yeah, and looking at the the end of the season coming up over here, the guys are coming back, and it's going to make them, you know, the health is going to get better. Then we got game speed, of course. Yeah, um, the, the college game is probably at a different speed level than the game over here. At least you're not used to playing this week by week. Right. Yeah, you can match with the speed, but you're not used to it. You got to look out how fast they come off the ball on both sides, how they execute, how fast they execute, how precise they are. So that's something I think the the, the Raiders got to get under control and then spread the ball. And that's something that uh, Coach Wilcox uh, from the Ravens told me before the game. They've been watching the film there. They're pretty impressed how Sean uses all his weapons. He doesn't have a favorite receiver. 
um, how he uses all his weapons to spread the ball around, which makes it really hard to defend. So if, if Sean can do that, if he has the time to do that, if they can manage the game speed, um, I think the Raiders can win it. Right. No, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to see them face to face and, and, and see how how the speed is a factor yeah. in the whole thing because we really don't know. And the thing is that like usually like the, the kids grow up in the states with football. They all everybody knows football. Everybody knows everything over there. And then uh, they I don't know why, but they're just faster. And that's one thing you always kind of like see whenever an European or anybody else country plays. Uh, a U.S. team that they just they just fly around. They just. I have. I think I have. A, I, I have an idea. First of all, it's the it's the attitude to the game. Um, you know, American kids grow up, and everything from day one is competition. Whatever they do, there's always a T-shirt you can win. You always want to be the best. Everything is competition. You're always acknowledged as the best. If you if you do the much, most bent presses, pull-ups, you're the best in the math class and history class. Yeah. It's always competition. Our kids don't have that that much, yeah? And then they always run around and they play three to four different sports a year. Our guys play football 10 months and take two months off. Right. Yeah, but they go, they play football, they play basketball, they run track, they go wrestling, uh, if play baseball, play tennis, go swimming, do whatever. So their athletic education, their overall athletic education, not football specific, mm -hmm. but overall athletic education, is I think a little more sound, and they started with weight training way, way earlier than people start over here. So these are, I think, the advantages, and I can only tell by my kid being over there in high school for a year and coming okay. back and looking totally different. Mm. Uh, in no, a lot I mean, of things. The, the, the school, the way it's built up around the sport and the, around the whole thing, like you said, is just different. So, I mean, that can be a factor, and it probably is. And, and it, all these sports are hosted by schools, so you don't have to. They, they, it's like, Totally different than in Europe, yeah. where you got all the club teams, and now you got to, all right, if a kid wants to play football, you got to give him football because he wants to do that. And so, yeah, you got to buy a, the equipment, and you can maybe not afford it. And then over there in school, you get it all; it's all there. All you mm -hmm. got to do is you stay in school anyhow. Right. Plus, you got one hour of, of uh, physical education PE every day. Right. Over here, we have like three hours a week. Yeah, it depends. I mean, some schools try to get it every hour, every you know, every day, one hour. Yeah. But it's it's like you said, there is no competition to it. There is no there there are no games, there is no rivalry against one school to another. It's more like you got one one hour of gym class. Yeah, the, the yeah, the um, what would I say, the value of sport in the American society is totally different from over here. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean here, all these Raiders players are, I would say like eighty, ninety percent, they they went through the whole youth program. So they're kind of like they 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 know football and they live football because what they what Coach Huan expects from from one of these uh, Team One players it's a lot because you know like we said you play every weekend now you got four practices a week and it's it it starts in March it ends in August so it's a half a year where you just football and that's it all right so yeah. Yeah, looking for the refs there in the tunnel already. As far as we can I see, because the sun is shining right at us. Here, Here comes Mr. Boyan Savicevic, <laughs> the whitehead. All right, it's going to be exciting for them as well. I mean, they, they're not used to, you know, here in Austria, you're allowed to have two to three imports. And hey, they got a team full of imports. And now, now they got a team full. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we were talking about, you know, the, the third, fourth, fifth stringers who get a chance to play today. Right. I mean, they're going to give it all they have because this might be the only time they, they can they can uh, show themselves. Definitely. They're going to use it as a showcase and they need to. They need to prove themselves. And we saw it in pregame already. Hey. You had, like, some people fired up and, you know, like, hugging the kicker and, and doing know, all that stuff. So when opportunity they're, they're knocks, excited. You, when opportunity knocks, you better open the door. Right. So, yeah. okay. here come the Ravens. So. There you go. And they look, if I look at the body language, they're ready. Yeah. I mean, they're focused, which is kind of a hard, the hard part, I would say, if you, if you travel around the world to play a game. But I think the coaches did a great job doing that. And here are the Ravens. Welcome to Innsbruck. So 
So like you, we said before, there are about 120 kids on their roster. They, they were able to bro bring like 40 kids over here to compete. They're going to enjoy every single moment of their trip. And they, the main focus is that they play well. There come, there are the Raiders. Here comes now. a scenario that's familiar to you. Yeah. You've been coming out of that helmet a couple of times. Yeah, I remember, long time ago though. I remember sitting here and talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll see the 25 years flag, the 25th year anniversary for the Sparkle Raiders. And there are the cheerleaders storming out the helmet. And you can tell the difference if you look at 25 years now, 25 years of Raiders. Look at the cheerleaders, how they jump in, do all their stunts and stuff. It's a little different than it was 25 years ago, uh, I would say. <laughs> and a very special moment today as well because they're, they're all the legends are coming in as well. So it's not only... It's nice that you find time to talk with me over here because you should be sitting on the other side and having a couple of cold ones. Yeah, no, it's all good. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> there are the legends you should be of the Sparkle there, Raiders to all. There are the old guys. So here's Rino Mario, number 50, right next to him. It's Simonek Stefan. And there's Kirengast Andy, Andy Prilla. A couple of all these guys, they're still working or helping out with the Raiders program and the youth and the KM and all over the place, so they're helping and out. Let's, and let's give them respect. They if they wouldn't have played the game for 25 years, we wouldn't be sitting here today doing this. Right, of course. They're doing their own little break in the middle. It's pretty awesome. So it's... <laughs> there you go. And now... the athletes are coming in. <laughs> Led by Paul Philip Lush. The starting center of the Sparkle Raiders. He'll, he'll, gonna, he'll hopefully have a great game as well. So I think he's going to be ready to go. They had, I talked to him. They had a great week of practice. So they should be ready. Then we got Habitit Michael waiting. Now we get the the starting defense, Stanley Arno Kale, number 91. So he's, Arno Kale Stanley, he's still a member of the junior national team. So he's very young as well. He looks like a man. Yeah, man child. <laughs> There's Padela, Reinhardt, Pop Philip. Padela Reinhardt he, himself, he's a policeman. So you gotta arrest people on the streets and then arrest the quarterback when he can. <laughs> there you go, Max Wilt. Yeah. He's he is fun to watch. I like the way he plays. Uh, Seba Fabian, he's very motivated. He's a very, very intelligent player. He knows where to be. He studies a lot, so he's get he, he's all into it. So he used to coach in the youth level as well, which helps. And he made himself a very, very good player. There's one of the hardest workers, Philip Magaita. One of the fastest and hardest hitters, I would say, in Europe. <laughs> There's Pilga Patrick. Strong safety. <laughs> and Enrico Martini, like always, he got a special little thing. Last year it was it was the hammer. This year he's kind of like setting the point on, hey, take the bike and don't ride the car. <laughs> <laughs> There's Vincent Müller, one guy from Fallberg, Seebagger, and he's one of the hardest hitters I've ever seen. He's, he's 
Very good run support. Yeah, he brings it. Yeah, and there is a former national team player as well as Vincent Billy, who was a former national team player as well. So it's it's Martin Shield. He went to China last year, and he's one young player as well for the Raiders starting already because, like we know, it, like about 20 players retired from last year to this year. So it's a whole new team, you could say. So Mark Rod is going to stand with the veterans for the national anthem. Yeah, you can tell that, you know, the guys who play a little longer, they got friends with the legends. <laughs> yeah, because they played with them. Right. Still setting something up over yeah. there. Yeah, I think they're going to put it, put up the helmets. I assume so. They, like all the teams are ready for the national anthem. The USA brought their own flag as well. In case we didn't know. I understand all this procedure, but boy, as a player, I used to hate it. You come out of the tunnel and you're up yeah. pumped, and it takes like 15 minutes to kick off. I was like, how do you stay high now? That's yeah, true. I mean, especially on these big, big games. I mean, I mean imagine. You know, like Austin Bowls, you know, like whenever it's a big game, it's always kind of like taking some time. And there we go. There come the helmets. Like we talked before, it's all about the helmet on the Betel for Tyrol. So whoever wins the game get to keep the opponent's helmet. I think it's a nice idea. Yeah, it's a very good idea, actually. And it's nice, I mean, because like, if I look at Coach Hua's office, he got all the different helmets now. <laughs> They're standing there, and it looks quite cool.
So one thing I wanted to ask you, Tino, uh, I was looking at the resume of their head coach, of the Ravens head coach, Wilcox, and he, it's very impressive to me because he was, he's the head coach since, ni since 1979, which is very, very rare, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm, especially in college sports where, you know, winning is so important, but on the other hand, he, he kind of put his program into place and he's been their only head coach ever since as far as I'm informed um, and they're successful right I mean that's the main thing and, the, and, the, and the next point about it is and I've learned that from uh, Ron Plants who was the Elmhurst head coach last year who used to be my defensive coordinator at the Dragons for a year okay that was a nice reunion here last year um, the next thing you got to be able to do as a coach at college level is recruit yeah and if you can recruit yeah. First of all, scholarship athletes, kind of type athletes that really make the program better. But like in a D3 school, if you can recruit, that's money for the school. So that's another point where people look at. And then most of these coaches coach different sports over the year. They don't only coach one thing. And uh, yeah, all better, right. better job security. Yeah, I guess so. So looking at the captains of the Sparkle Raiders to hold, there's Paul Philip Lush, Seba Fabian, I got the Philip and Habiti and Mikhail. On the other side, we got we got number 99, Matt Morillo, who's a pretty big guy though, and he's playing defensive line. Then we got Jared Shepard, a D lineman as well, number 90, number 45. It's uh, Kenny Hirschberger, he's a linebacker. And then we got number 75. It's Garrett Bader, offensive line. So we got three defensive guys and one offensive guy out there as a captain. Yeah, but that offensive guy takes room for two. I mean, <laughs> maybe they say it that way. That's a big uh, man. <laughs> I mean, like you There's said, your old buddy and teammate coming. Yeah. I wonder what they're going to do. I'm really, I'm really. Wondering, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not informed what's going to happen. Well, they're going to coin so. toss it, so. Okay. So it's. What else do they do? I don't know. Maybe play do, flag football. Do like <laughs> exhibition. A, do like a flip. <laughs> 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 uh, it's a coin toss. All right. Yeah, Rinomar is one of the players of the decades. It's, it's like Daniel Diplinger, uh, Rinomar, Kanabe de Günther. Now, new ones, new introduced ones are number 36 right there, one of the captains, Maga de Philip, and number 70, Habitin Michael. Yeah. They're both of them, they're very, very. He keeps getting deserved better to do every it. year. Habitin still is getting better every year. Yeah, I mean, I think games like these help him big time because now he gets a very, very good competition. Yeah. And, and that's what he needs because sometimes, you know, like uh, when you're. Uh, if you play at a certain level, you just need Raider Nation, Austria, this is Willie Brown. Hey, I enjoyed last time I was over there. You guys won, so I know we can win again this year. Good luck to you, and always remember, commitment to excellence, and go Raiders. is over the hashes yeah. now, half an hour That was ago. one of our great supporters, Willie Brown. He was here years ago with all the cheerleaders from Oakland Raiders, yeah, and he's still watching. Maybe he's watching right now, so hello out there to all the Oakland Raiders fans and to Willie Brown and, and all the other guys from the Oakland Raiders. We're still, we're in season, and we're watching what you guys are doing in the OTAs, but um, we're very, very thankful if you guys are joining in and watch it over here as well. Hello. Hello, Raider Nation. So the Raiders are getting ready for their kickoff. The Ravens will receive. So number 80, Fabian Abfarta, is the, the one who's kicking off. Lately, they brought in There he goes to kick off. He's, puts it deep in the end zone and he takes it out. And Martini's right there and misses the tackle. 
And now they brought him down at about the 23, 25 yard line. Well, it was Logan it? Harris, the wide receiver, returned the kick. A couple yeah. of yards deep in the end zone. Yeah. So they're at the 26 yard line, so it, it actually paid off to bring it out. And Enrico Martini was there, could have secured a tackle for a big play, but at the end, couldn't hold on to it. All right, first and 10. At the right hash yard. Coming out with it. Good old I formation. Yeah. Schaefer Schutz. Schaefer Schutz is on the center, I formation, pro style. Incomplete pass on a bubble screen. So, so right there, it's it's kind of like an unusual formation. If, if Everybody's you at, running the spread nowadays. You at, here comes some old school guy with the I formation. Right. I formation, 11 personal, uh, 21 personal, like two running backs, tight end. If you got the personal, you can you got do the it. Field. Fullback looks like a disguised right. guard. So it's second and ten. And there goes a run play to the left side. Missed the tackle here, and it looks like they're close. So it was Charles Neyart going to the left side on a counter play. And it's Zach Renfro is the fullback. And he gets somebody out of the way. Right, so Martin Shield was able to make the, the tackle. But there again, it's first and 10 on the 36 yard line. Full there back. goes the fullback. And he goes nowhere. And stop short. Picks that up, was a, squeezes a yard out of it. Maybe. Right, good tackle. Right there. Stops him. Center of the line. Right, they couldn't get they couldn't get, get a push up field. Yeah. They did a great great job right there. So second and ten. Still on the left hash. There it goes. Nice. Now it's a run. Couldn't really hold on to on the very first tackle. So it's Charles Neyard again. It looks like now they're Mr. switching. Bader, the captain, pulled around on that play. Had a nice block outside. So it should be. So there you go. You got third and five. Here comes the spread. You got three receivers to the left side. Tied to two receivers. Drops back to pass. Dumps it incomplete. Overthrows the receiver. Now we got a fourth down. So. Logan Harris, the intended receiver, well covered by Fabian Saber in this case. Yeah. Ball overthrown, no chance. And now I'm eager because this kid, Sebastian Harris, the punter in pregame, he nearly, he nearly kicked the ball out of the stadium. Right. And yeah, we'll see what happened now. It's a whole different story most of the time if it's under pressure or not. First of all, that snap is so quick. We're not used okay. to that here. Look. Yeah. Yeah, good decision to uh, let it go by Andy yeah. Martini. He, get, he had good luck, too, with the bounce. But in the end, it's a touchback right there. Yeah, and that, that's like a 60-yard punt. Yeah. Ooh, that helps. <laughs> yeah, so the defense actually did a great, great job the first the first drive. Yep. Stopping the, stopping the run and then containing that pass. Here comes the Sean. So now the Raiders take over on the 20 yard line. And they come with two backs. Right, it's Flyge Philip and Bonatti Tobias back there. Split backs. Sandro Platzkoma is not going to play today because he's out. He's hurt. So we'll see. It looks like a blitz. Raven they're bringing. Show blitz picked up well. Picked up, but stopped right there. Up right there, but number 99, which is one of the captains. It was Matt Mar Marillo. Oh, Snap was on the ground. Sean had to pick it up. Okay. Snap was on the ground. Sean had to pick it up. That disrupts the timing of the play, and then it goes for zero. So that's damage control here. So you got second, second and ten. Two backs. Motion. Adrian Platzkuma. 
It's a new guy there beckoning. Complete pass to, to up front of five and who gets more out of it. Gains another first down, but is slow to get up right there after that, after that your run after catch. Uh, but the way his body's showing, it looks like he's got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I, I mean, do. I mean, he was bothered last yesterday, uh, last year with injuries. Ball's at the 44. They made a great catch, a nice effort to get, gain yeah. more yards after that catch. It looks like he landed on the football, so I don't really know. Maybe it's, like you said, it's the wind. He was like, oh, can't see nothing. That also got driven into his shoulder, maybe. Yeah. His shoulder got driven into the ground, so. Oh, that would be horrible. Let's hope for the best. But he's on hands and knees, so it's not too bad, at least yeah. from his body language, he should be able to get up. It's just take care of him a little bit. You want these inter you don't want anybody to get hurt in the international game. There he is. There. Walks off under his own power. Oh, he's jogging already, so. Yeah. Good. I'd like to see that. The Raiders this year are not very lucky when it comes down to injuries. So let's hope that's not not for long. He's, he will come back. So now they Raiders come out in 10 personnel. Doubles. Drops back to pass. Throws. Catch. And gets eight yards out of that reception. Nice, quick decision making on Sean Shelton's side here. Pre-snap, he chooses one side where he's going to read, and then it's there, and the ball is complete. I mean, that corner Signal gave Diana. that corner gave a whole lot of cushion as well. So he was dropping, yeah. um, and that's what Sean reads pre then. pre snap That's the side I'm going to look at. It's only one, two throw. So now we're back in 20 personal. Now we got near formation right there. Play action pass. There's Kyle Kellen open for the first down. So you can actually, like at the beginning, if you look at that stage now, it looks like the Raiders, they're just more in rhythm since they're right. It's, it's game eight. Yeah, I mean. They play every week and in, you can tell. in season, they just go through. Protections there. Sean goes through his, his progression. Kyle Callahan's wide open ball in the 35 yard line first down. So now they're, the Raiders are in the Ravens territory. And I, it looks like they're kind of like a little bit overwhelmed right now with, oh, what's going to happen, or what's happening here. They got a two high shell, going cover four. Sean got time, is in a hurry now, still stay on his feet, and got sacked right there. Yeah, they're relentless, they just keep coming, and he loses right. 10. On this one, he had to break like two tackles and still got tackled. I mean, they went in a cover four right there, so he got everybody covered. Yeah, it's a coverage and then, sack. Sean doesn't find yeah. anybody to throw the ball to. Now he tries to buy time, right. escapes the tackle here, and then the next guy comes and cleans him up. So we got second and 17. That's second and very, very long right there. So. Need to come back to They're backing out of the blitz. Manageable down here. Four man rush. And there oh. goes back to Abfalta. There's so Abfalta right is back hole again. Right in the middle of the defense. Nice little sit route yeah. there. Very well read coverage by the receiver. And then Sean finds him. And it's yeah, third and two. Him. Right. It was very important. I mean, gain of 15 yards right there. Yeah. So now they're, it's an easy. Just easy a deep third, curl. Third and short. Third. So there's still 10 personal trips to the left side, trips to the field. They're already in fecal range, I would say. Looks like it covered zero here. Yeah, but that's a manageable third down. And I don't know, Kyle is just ducking from the football. Couldn't well, see the ball, he's saying. He's looking back into the sun right, right there, so. Yeah, you can't see none. So it's fourth down, it's gonna be a tough decision. You wanna go for it here, or you're gonna try to kick a field goal? I mean, you are on the 26-yard line, right I hash. I don't know, third and third and one. I've, and as he threw it on third and one, I reckon he's going to go for it on fourth. Otherwise, he would have ran for it in third down. 
He was open though. Try to get the, yeah, but you're looking back in the sun. Yeah. That's something I, I learned as a coach later when I said to my receiver, what the hell's wrong? He says, I'm looking in the sun every time I turn around. There you go. There's an incomplete pass. It was they well, well him. played, well played well by the defended. defender. Incomplete pass to Simon Olderina. And now you get turnover on downs on the Ravens 26 yard line. Yeah, it gives them a little lift, which is good. Definitely. I mean, it's surprising. Because in the end, we want to see a competitive game here. Right. We're going to have some fun, you know, watch some good football. And that's. So Ravens are taking over on, the, on their own 26-yard line. They're, they put in their last year's starting quarterback, which is actually Jacob Cuesta, Cuesta, who's not allowed, as far as I know, he's not allowed to play next fall. And he's, he brought, he's brought like down on the... On the it looked like a play action scheme where they pull yeah. two linemen and then the protection to one side, there they go. Yeah. The protection to one side works because everybody looks at the puller, but the back side, it breaks down and then Cresta has to run for his life. Right. I mean, they set it up before it's, it's, because they had that kind of like pin and pull technique before. It's a, it's a nice idea to pull linemen right. on, on pass protections, but wow, you better be sound about it. Yeah, because second, second and nine. Still eye formation, 21 personal pin and pull right there. Boy, I love Pop this kid. And there goes number 14. That's the sideline. It steps out of bounds right around the 40-yard line. So they're, they're in Raiders territory. 75, he, Garrett Bader, the right guard. Biggest guy on the team is the guard. He pulls. That guy has some feet. And look him come around the corner here. Yeah. Bam, there's that block, and that makes the whole play go. Right. He's got some feet. That kid is impressive. And then nice run, of course, by Mr. Knight. I take nothing away, but yeah. without that block, he goes for minus two. Of course, it looks like it's a bread and butter thing. I mean, they, they pin they pin with the tackle and pull the guard. Yeah. And then now they come back with a fullback dive here. Pick up four, three. Yeah, about three yards. Now they're, they got second and six. Second and about six. Right hash. Yeah, they double team inside. Yeah, like you, the, the, like the backside guard, guard the linebacker, and then you pick up three yards or four yards because you got a hat and a hat. Yeah. So they're still post. They're still lining up in a near formation. Twenty-one personnel. Looked like a hard count, and now they got to go with a counter play here. Well defended. Well defended by the Raiders defense. And they use, I mean they, they, apparently they like to do all the gap scheme stuff. So they, they pull, they pin a pull. They, they like to bring extra people around. So it does help to have, like you're saying, guards well, here it is. with I great mean, feet. They go, like, they go two back and they go run, run. Now they got to throw, they go to four receivers. Right, so you got third, third down, motion to trips. And a swing screen to number 14, who's pretty dangerous when it comes down to open field. Yeah, and he's got a first down. So here comes a fullback again now. And here we go back to, uh, to two back. Right. And number four, Sam Bitulli, the wide receiver, comes out of the game. So it's first to 10. Number 42, Zach for the Renfro, that's the fullback. They're back to 21 personnel, eye formation. And it's a straight ISO play ISO right in the play. middle of the defense. Didn't go uh, maybe a yard or two. Right, I mean, line-wise, that's one thing what, what I figured last year, because in college you're just limited by age, you know, like in, in, in Austria or in, the, in, the, in all the clubs, you don't really have that. You can play as long as you want. So the, the people you play, they're usually a little bit bigger. Yeah, and sometimes it's just boys against men. Right, so now second and nine. But they're coming off the ball well. Bringing the ball. Oh, missed the tackle again by Enrico Martini. But that's tough. I mean, you know, like that was probably the first pass they threw out of that 21 personal stuff. Yeah, well, we got a flag.
So, Mr. Savicevic. Hmm. Illegal contact oh. to the head? No, I illegal man downfield. Oh, okay. They say 86 was covered in front. Right. Yeah, okay, I got you. So they, they had a tight end. He was covered, and, and he was going on downfield right there. And that's not a lot. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> I mean, that can happen if you're not, you know, like when you're coming out of spring practice, and now you just go through the whole thing. Yeah, now they got to move the ball back. Spotted it wrong. Now it goes back. It's going to be second and about 14. So it's a draw, draw play, play right nice. there. Well executed. Show pass, fold block it in the middle. Go back to 10 personnel on obvious That's passing team. downs. Right, it's third and nine. 11 personnel, they got to tie it to the right side, to the boundary. Now swing running back again, go. Oh, it's an incomplete. Couldn't hold on to the ball. It was would have been a first down on a deep out route. But instead, it's incomplete, and now it's fourth down. Let's see what he's going to do. Looks like they're going for it. Going for it on fourth down. So like the Raiders did on fourth and short, now the Ravens are going on fourth and long, fourth and nine. So we'll see what's going to happen. They stay in their 11 personal. Quarterback's dropping back to pass. They're bringing the blitz. Slings it out there. And it's caught. Nope. It's incomplete. Incomplete in the end zone. I mean, he had Pilga turned around completely. But yeah, the what field. We, what we can't see from here is if maybe his first foot landed out of bounds at the back of the end zone. I mean, it had the to ref be. standing right next to it. I know. Right. I couldn't tell. Here's the blitz. Beautiful right. block by 14. Cuts him down. And then Custer throws it as far as he can. Ah, uh, that looks, it looks more like a completion than it looks like an incomplete. From what I can but, see here, yes. But we agree. got lucky on this one then, Maybe. if it's that way. So it, Raiders taking over. Under two minutes, first quarter. So it is a game what we expected. So we, we, we want to ask you to, to give us a roll call. So where are you watching from? So can you let us know on Facebook, facebook.com slash Raiders TV, and post in there where are you watching the Raiders TV show from? Maybe put a picture on that too. We can't show the picture, but we can say where you are. So put in where you're watching from, and we would appreciate that very much. And Mr. Bonatti just ran for two yards. And Last broadcast four weeks ago when I was here on the roll call, the three most exotic ones were Vietnam, Jamaica, and El Salvador. Okay. And one guy posted, I'm sitting on the stands right opposite in the stadium watching you guys broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can do that as well. Yeah. If you want to have some coming. Complete ball. Complete it. To Adrian Platzkummer. Right, he's back. Like One of Platzkummer is back. One Platzkummer is out. So nice pickup here by Bonatti. Nice step up by yep. Sean to, yep. to get this step in the, there. The time when he needs to do, deliver well the football. Well executed. All right, we got a first down on the 43, 44 yard line. It's a pass, dropping back to pass again. Swings it to Bonatti. Now number 50 closes in. Got him stopped after a gain of about eight yards. Yeah, and the tackle was made by number number 50, I think. He, he was hustling over there. I think oh. number nine, De Maria Walters, was there. Okay. Is he over there? Yeah. 
So we got third and short. Second, second and short. Second and short. This is always a nice down as an offensive coordinator because now you can do whatever you want. I mean, you got one. You can go you deep if you want shot. to. Don't throw a pick. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like they're, they're showing blitz. They're bringing two people. Going with a speed option here. Getting the first down. Yeah. Good pickup. Good presence of mind. Had the right Good. play called against the blitz here. Very that's interesting, though. I mean, that's the end of the first quarter, but well executed. Sean stands in there, gets the ball to Bonatti. Good blocking on the perimeter. All right. So now, again, please let us know where are you watching from. So post it on Facebook at Raiders TV. Look, look it up, and then post where where are you watching from? Is it Vienna? Is it Innsbruck? Is it Vietnam? Or maybe it's somewhere else, but post it so we can we can talk about it. So we're going to look at the stats stats right here for the first quarter. Total yards, Raiders are ahead, and what's what's very permanent, or like it's very outstanding, is like passing yards, 83 to zero, and rushing yards, 61 to two. So what do you think about that, well, Tino? Zero can be correct because Custer completed one down here. But that was the, the one with the penalty. Oh, okay, was the, yeah, true. The, that was the was one with covered. the penalty, yeah. Thanks, first of all, to the guys from Hockey Data uh, who pre presented us with this uh, because they deserve recognition here. And now you got Bonatti down. Ah. But it looks like he'll be all right, just get some tape job done. Okay, maybe his shoelace yeah, got He's back open. up, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like Shoelace Robinson. You know, he just don't like to have the shoelace open. Yeah. So <laughs> All right, so now, uh, again, like, if you look well, what at... Well, what do I think of zero yards passing? Well, they come out in two back, and that's their bread and butter. They're right. a run offense, and they throw when they have to. And they might, they might, you know, stick in a play action here and there, which they tried. Uh, but that one surprised me. On the other hand, they've been moving the ball successfully running. I mean, they had... The first drive was, a, I think, it was a three and out. And now the, the second, they kind of, like, started to roll. But I think they... They sh they're probably going to start Schaefer again the next drive because they need to put more focus on this kid, kid since he's allowed to play this in, this in the fall. All right, yeah, now he's throwing the ball again down there on yeah. the sideline. So. Yeah, first and ten. Oh, wide open. Wide open F Fabian Abfalter. And this is Getting the third the time that Sean has found a hole in the middle of that defense. Yeah. I mean, they're bringing the blitz, and there's no nobody to replace. You know, yeah. you, you got the one go, one back going with the running back. Nobody's replacing the blitzer. Yeah, it's a nice design when you see the blitz coming that you go, I'll send the back out so they can get right. one linebacker to cover him. And then they, they find, like, the donut loop right. in the middle of the defense and just throw it there, and it's easy pitch and catch. Yeah, it seems like it. I mean, they got two safeties back there, but, I mean, you can – Secure the touchdown, but you, but you can't really stop it. I got first, first and ten, dropping back to pass under pressure again. Throws it incomplete to Bonatti. Throws it incomplete to Bonatti. I would say it was a great heads-up play by Sean right there. Yeah. Well, they're bringing more, a little more pressure now, and I tell you what, Mr. Habitin is having his hands full, but he's doing well, holding his ground. Yeah, second and ten. Raiders are again in field goal range. We're on the 25-yard line. There's a 10 person, one running back in the backfield. Three receivers to the right. Looks like cover zero here. The blitz is coming. Play action. Play action going deep, going for all. Oh, nice play by the defense. Disrupting the pass on Kyle Callahan. It was a good idea, too just to give it a shot. I mean, there was. Yeah, but that's well covered. Doesn't commit any foul. It's right. well covered, clean play. Is that number three? It's hard to see Jacob Boyd. Yeah, looks like him. So again, we got third and 10, third and long now. Raiders are still 10 personal, one running back. Four receivers. Three receivers to the right. Quarterbacks dropping back to pass. Under pressure again. Nice catch by Bonatti. 
See if he can fight through for the first. Is it enough? Mm, it doesn't look so, like it. Looks like it's short. We'll see. Now it's fourth, yeah, and, fourth, and, fourth one. and one, yeah. So there you go. So Sean Shelton under pressure again. Yeah, and Joseph Fuchs had a huge check to right tackle. He just got flattened by his defender. <laughs> hey, Joseph, you're supposed to put out the pancakes, not take them. So Raiders go in empty formation, put Bonatti out there. Now you got, you can see it as a mismatch. You got number 50 coming in. Quarterback's running it for. That's enough. Is it a first down? Yeah. yeah. For the first, okay. So Raiders are be are still in business. It's first and ten on the 13 yard line. So they went into empty, like spreading the defense out and then sneaking through. Yeah, try to get everybody out of the box and then it's a designed quarterback run. And Sean, he's hard to bring down. Plus, he's not afraid to lower his head and right. take on a linebacker there. And that's one thing with concerns Lee sometimes that he always takes the head down and do that stuff like that. They got 20 personal. Here comes They're the bringing blitz the blitz again. again. Well picked up, option play. Couldn't hold on to the block for too long. Kyle Kyle in here, so. Nice run by Mr. Bonatti. Tell me, how good is this kid? He's, he's so young. I just saw the portrait of him four weeks ago. And I mean, him and Sandro, they're one age aside. So, so Sandro is one year older. So I had both of them with the under 17 two years ago. Okay. So they're both very good and they benefit from each other. So I think for Bonatti, it's very good. They, they're, they're working out together. So they, they do a lot of stuff together. So they run together, they lift together. That's good. So they, they're, they're very beneficial when it comes down and to he's that. He's got good size for a tailback. You go with the slant. Ooh. Oh, drops it, flag. but there's a flag down. Could be like a little hold here. Yeah, but that was hard to catch. I was going to say drop it at that one. Sean threw a rope on this one. Well, I mean, they went with double slants. Defensive holding on an receiver. So now we got a first and goal right now half the distance so we're going from the what from the three four right about there yeah right about four yards yeah balls on the four four yard line so still in four receiver set Bonatti is a single back in the back there looks like the offensive line got really wide splits on this one and they spread it out and touchdown Raiders. So there goes Shelton on the speed option and puts it in himself. And now you know why they had these wide splits. <laughs> I can see the smile through the helmet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's satisfied on this one. So the Raiders taking over. Extra the point by the former professional soccer player. And it's good. Extra style points for the special team. Thomas Pichelman. Thomas Pichelman, yeah, he was a, I'm not very good with soccer, but I heard he was one of the, he was a, a, a national team player as well. So he must have been pretty good. And I guess. So here comes that speed option again. Yeah. Nice way for nice from Sean to set up the linebacker number 50. Right. Stare at that pitch, that makes the linebacker hesitate. Colton right. Parr, defensive end, and didn't have a chance. And then Sean comes downhill, and if he decides, if he decides to come downhill, it's hard to stop it. Right. Now, I mean, he, as far as I know, he was a defensive end, tight end, quarterback, athlete, Sean. <laughs> so, you know, he's a big, big load coming downhill here, and he did a great job with you know, like you said, setting. Setting up the defensive end, square like that. His, his hip is turned, and then putting it up. Oh. Okay, we got the roll call here. Where are you watching? And we got Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Luxembourg, Birmingham, Alabama. I've been there myself. 
So hello to Birmingham, Alabama. Erskine, Scotland. Overland Park, Riyadh, Kansas. Saudi Arabia. Oh, there you go. That's probably one of the parents. You know, a, you know a, what a I've learned? Player. You know what I've learned doing this? You better watch out what you're saying because you never know where this is going to be heard <laughs> in this world. You really got to watch out. Yeah. So there's Long Beach, California, St. Louis, Miami, San Diego. And right next to San Diego, there's our beloved Bugenland. <laughs> uh, then we got Carinthia, Vienna, Kansas, of course. And there's Riley Ings, mom's watcher from Arizona. So hello to Arizona. Yeah, we appreciate every one of you watching out there in the States. I mean, you don't have no football right now. You can watch over here. That's nice. We enjoy it. So let's go Thank back. Thank you, Martin, for the information. Let's go back to the we game. Have a, we have kind of this, the silent service guy behind us. Martin is doing all the work and making us look good. It's, it's first and 10 after a touchback kick. Pass attempt incomplete to the right side by Mr. Well, Schuster. Well defended by Enrico Martini. Yeah, and hey, that was a that's on a first down, a pass with a right. four receiver set. Somebody went wrong in the game plan. So the chart got flipped or something like that. Ah, they're just breaking tendencies. That's yeah, all. Well, this is great. So now they're gonna go again. Eleven personal tight end set, single back. Yeah, a big old fullback in there. Motion. For the protection now. And it's now they're gonna pump fake and go. the screen. Over go the vertical. Over the top of the receiver. Pass Incomplete. intended for number four. Jake uh Sam Vitulli again, the receiver. Way overthrown. So we're at third and ten now. Third and ten. They're gonna put in number 14. They're their first uh, they're quick, they're scat back, they're, they're starting tailback. Charles Nyhart. Motion. And it's screen right there. Slip screen with number 14. Got a little bit of room, but not enough. Doesn't look like they got the first down. So it's going to be third, fourth down, fourth and one, it looks like. There you see, we rolls it out. It, I mean, it looks like the ball. Flag's taken back. Okay. Now. I thought maybe the running back was in front, like beyond the line of scrimmage where he called the ball, and then it would have been an illegal man downfield. But what, the running back? No, he can go downfield. Of course, but there was an offensive line going okay. out yeah. because it was a slip screen. Yeah, but they took it away, so, it's so they take. They're taking. It's like fourth down. Here comes the punt team. Down. And Martinez, Enrico Martinez, set to return. No, oh, they huddled up on the sideline for the punt team. I could, can't really recall if they did that before. So maybe there will be a fake coming up. So don't really know. But they are in their own their own well territory. Now. But there's a flag down. It looks like delay of game right there. It is. Delay of game well, on the offense. Was, if there was a fake call, that's yeah. out of the window now. So, so now it's going to be fourth and seven. And they don't look too worried about it, so. No. Nah. So we'll see if Enrico Martini can feel that punt. Oh, it's a beauty. <laughs> Goes back, all the way back, and it's into the end zone for a touchback. The, all right, but that the, was a close The ball one. left his foot on the 15-yard line and hits the ground on the opposite eight line. yard line. No, it was a nice Now nice you do punt. the math. <laughs> Very nice play. So there, the Raiders taking over again on the offense. So on the side of the Ravens, they're gonna rotate through the whole game. They brought 40 kids and they want to play everybody, so. Yeah, Mr. Custer's taking snaps again now. So now they're gonna bring in Try to get everybody playing time because it's quite a, a trip to Austria and then not to not play. So everybody's gonna play. Everybody's gonna have. Everybody's will have a great experience. Now Raiders are taking over on the 20-yard line. Goes. 
Double formation, pass it, complete to Abfalta. Right now they're doing a great job, like spreading the football, one of the keys. Spreading the ball, they put the ball out to Bonatti, to, to Callahan, to Abfalta. has got a couple they Actually, Abfalta yeah. got the most catches, but yeah, but that's just he a nice little come around. He's right. the outside receiver here. He's got a nice little comeback yeah. around. Know where the sticks are. Turn around, catch the ball, first right. down, first boom. Down. Just keep the, ball, keep the clock moving, yeah. so. So Raiders go, got another first down, go two backs. Philip Flies checks in the game. In there as a fullback. And it's a stretch to the outside. Now it, the, the game speed on this one just Caught well, up, caught well up with played, Toby well Benaji stretched out play. the ball. You got more blockers on the point of attack than you need, but one or two guys get through, and then it, it, it's in the end, it's 24. Will Argana, a linebacker from Festus, Missouri. Yeah, I mean you can't really make three guys miss. So, but it's tough. I mean, the offensive line got a, their hands full. Yep, they got a lot to do. Man. They got a lot to do. They 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 bring a lot of blitzes. I mean, it looks like they they stay in the 30 front right now. They blitz from all over the place. There comes another one. And Bonatti can't pick him out. He no. slips and then Sean has to get rid of it and throws it in the back of Leitch. There's a play action. Now we got third and long. Third and long. Raiders stay in their 20 personnel. Now they, sh they switch. So Simon Undrena comes on the field. So we, we're going to have 10 personnel. Four receivers, three receivers to the right. It's third and ten. Oh, you got the mismatch right here with yes. Callahan against that linebacker. You got to yes. throw that one. All right, they go low verticals. And there's Adrian Plotskoma with the catch and more. So they go four verticals on this one, and they only had it looks like quarters coverage, quarter, quarter, half, some type of deal like this. And now number three, he was wide open because they overplayed. Yeah. The safety overplayed the, the number two. They doubled two Callahan receiver. because Callahan had a linebacker that he outran, right. clearly outran, and then Adrian comes in behind it and sits down, and Sean finds him. And so they're suddenly now on the on opponent back on the 17-yard line, 18-yard right. line. Oh, we got a little delay. Looks like the chain broke. Chain chain broke. My referee is saying this is not a timeout, it's an equipment timeout. So, looking at the whole thing, what do you th what do you think? Is it like it looks like Benedictine? They're Dick they're 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 working their way into this game. I think they're getting better. Okay. Yeah, they've been improving. They 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 need a little time to find their rhythm. They need a little time to get these guys to play together. Um, and that's not attitude, it's just, you know, it just takes time because they're not used to playing with each other. You can see that the right. Raiders are used to playing with each other. But they have superior athletic, uh, they have speed, they have size, they're well executing. So the Raiders are struggling, but right now. Oh, almost picked, almost picked. So they brought a blitz again. Yep. It, it was picked up, but he had no chance to escape. 45, Kenny Hirschberger, the linebacker, nearly picked that ball. It looked, looks like he didn't, it could, like Sean couldn't see him. There is Kenny Hirschberger. From Arizona. Been there, what a great place. They got second and 10 on the Ravens 17 yard line. Oh, you got fade all over down here. Now like, here comes the blitz. They blitz again, they're bringing the heat. Picked up. Picked up, oh, and dropped. Dropped by Callahan in the end zone. That's so. rare. I mean, you can tell that he... Kyle you know, never drops the ball, does he? I mean, he's, he's now not, you know, he's not... He's not in playing the rhythm. Playing rhythm. You yeah, know, because like he doesn't said, play he, in the Austrian right, League. Right, he's yeah. not in the Austrian League. He's coaching in the Austrian League now. You can, you can have a drop here and there then. Yeah, oh, sure you can, but I mean, that right. just rarely happens to him. So I got third and ten. I don't care if he <laughs> sat out a year. <laughs> Flag down, it looks like a false start. Full start number 80, so Abfalter moved early, which makes it now third and 15. pretty difficult. 
So what, what would you do on third and 15 in that kind of area? Would you kind of like? What would I do? Try I'd to throw Co it? Coach Lee call a play. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, throw it. Throw it, uh, screen it, draw it, but know where the sticks are. And plus, on the other hand, you can say, I got two downs to pick up 15 yards. So you can throw like a nice little curl for eight or nine I mean, and still have a chance to get closer to field goal mm -hmm. or, you know, go for it. But you don't have to go for it. You got 20 personnel here. Split backs. Oh, up foot. Uh, Platskuma. Platskuma is open. Yeah. He Caught it. Yeah, it and now up. we're at the 10, 11 yard line. It's, it's fourth and five. So the here Raiders the field are goal team. sending in a field goal team here. Yeah. Again, over the middle. That's the hole where Platskuma always sits down. And uh, now we got the field goal team. And if they make it, it's a two score game. And that's a good, good decision here. Yeah. So now there it goes again. Special teamer. Mr. Pichelmeyer. Mr. Pichelmeyer. Gets it. And it's through. All right, that's great. The Raiders are You can expanding. tell the way he kicks the ball. He is so scared to get in. <laughs> he really the, is. The one thing I really liked about him is, like, the newspaper was asking, like, because he was a former player. He played soccer in this stadium. So he's yeah. from Vaca. And they asked him, hey, uh, you know, like in kicking in, 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 in football, you have to kick over the goal. Yeah. And he goes like, yeah, I, I used to do that anyway. I used to do that anyhow. <laughs> so everything's fine. I missed that. a soccer goal. I used to hit it over, at any, over the ball. <laughs> so I'm good with that. All right, so Q&A, question and answer. Ask Flo and Tino. So whenever you got any questions, like, I don't know what, uh, put it on Facebook at Facebook Raiders TV. Uh, just ask some questions. Maybe we'll we see can. What, we'll we, see what we, we can, can answer. Right. Maybe we got some answers for you. If we don't have any, don't be upset. Yeah. But we'll try our best to and do it. And if you just want to say hello, we also appreciate it. Roll call still going. Let us know where you're watching from. All right. There you go. Lot, lot of guys from Germany. It says here Poland, Warclaw. So that's probably Nick Johansson. Hello to Mr. Johansson. So there goes the kickoff. They received it, and he's still on his feet. Now he got slammed down on the 22-yard line. So going back to the roll call, we got Poland, Wachau, Finland, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Italy, Winston, Georgia. Okay, so there Gary wants a shout out to his team, West Coast Trojans from Scotland. Scotland, Todd Hendricks. Okay. We were there, remember? Yeah, Scotland, we, we were we, there. Been there, done that. Seen 2002 Scotland. 2002 Junior Todd Champions. Todd Hendricks, hello from me, Todd Hendricks. Hey, Todd. Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Luxembourg, Birmingham. They're, they're against. Hey, same right, thing. Here we are. We're oh, looking, there you go. Getting roasted the by the sun here, is. man. I can't see anything, but here come the Ravens so, again. Pumps, takes it, pumps it. Going deep. Number 19 catches it. And he's still going. Hard to bring down, but finally made it by Pilga on the opponent two-yard line. They put it at three-yard three, line. Yeah. So but I'll tell you what, Mr. Who's that number 19? Mr. Logan Harris, the receiver. It's a shame you don't see it. It's a nice throw pump by Custer. It's an out and up by Harris. And then he looks, the way his body language is, he looked confident all the way that he would catch the ball. There was no doubt in his mind that he would catch the ball. It's a nice run after catch. Now you come back to the huddle and they call you speed because you got dropped on a three-yard line. Right. <laughs> I mean, you, made, you, right, you so just made an 80-yard play and then you take the heat from your, from your buddies. So now, now it's been official. Now we've got 21 personnel fullback here. Going ISO. Push, getting some extra push. But well defended uh, by flag. the defense. There's a flag down. Late flag. Max Vilt, number 90, again, shut that thing down. And that guy is, is a house. You can't move him. He is just right. huge and really aggressive. Okay. Uh, he grabbed the face mask on this one. That happens. But like you said, that happens like in he's, the pile. A, he's a very, very big man. Yeah. And I was talking to offensive linemen. When they face him on one-on-one -on -one drills in practice, they got a hard time. They got their hands full. Yeah. And Griffin Bledsoe, number that. 71, the left tackle. He's just making that experience. 
Right, so there you go. They got Let's a first see if they down come back with the, the same stuff. Now they're on the one yard line. Good motion, motion here. And then and coverage, they give it, it to 14 again, and he's in. There you go. Touchdown, Ravens. So they put some points on the scoreboard here. We have four and a half minutes to go. It was Charles Inhart. Charles Nyhart, Nyhart, Nyhart. It's like a power play here. They, yep. they they kicked out at the end and pulled the guard good, around. Good block by the fullback again. Zach Renfro. Yeah, good goal. And it is good. So scores Sam now. Sam Tuli, the receiver, kicks the extra point. Ten for the Raiders, seven for the Ravens. So actually, it's a nice well, little ball game. It's a watching. very good it's ball game so far. It is fun. I very mean, I must say, it's really fun, and I just wish the, the damn sun would go down because it's shining in my face all the time, and I can't see anything. <laughs> so again, question and answer. You ask us questions, and we'll try to answer. So yeah. check, you ask check us it out. Facebook. We shrug our shoulders. Facebook.com/slash <laughs> Raiders TV. So whenever you got some questions, ask us. The weather is great. If that's one of the questions. If Weather's great. Tell. We are in Austria. It's not Australia. Yeah. It's in Europe. We're and fine. And Having a blast. And the game is awesome. Yeah, we're enjoying, enjoying the Raiders, and we're enjoying the Benedictine Ravens here. The Ravens are getting set for kickoff. So we got four, four minutes and thirty seconds on the play clock till halftime. So it's plenty of time. So you actually want to drain the clock on an offensive drive right now so that the opposing team is not going to get another drive. So there you go. And kicking it off. Interesting approach from the kicker, like a two-step, and then he hits it out of, out of the end zone. Yeah, that's the punter. Yeah. He'd rather kick it from his hand because <laughs> but then we'd be crawling on the stadium roof looking for the ball. There's a touchback. So the Raiders are taking over on the 25-yard line. Four minutes and 30 seconds in the first half. So, like, so far, very, very good game. Yeah. Evenly matched. We had big, big, big plays on both sides of the ball, both sides of the offenses. I think no turnovers so far. But, like, the Ravens, like you said, the Ravens are kind of like finding their rhythm. Getting into the They're game. starting to play their way into it, yeah. So now it's it's two seconds still ball. I don't know what's going on here now. Because the play clock is expired. It didn't look like the ball was ready. Yeah. And but we got now a delay we're game getting a delay game. So that was interesting. Huh. Because the play clock was expired by like, I don't know, like 10 seconds. Okay. So now we got first and 15, which is not the best start you can get. At least you got four downs to, to get it done. Raiders are in 10 personnel. They go doubles. Yeah, that's a little thing they'd like to do. They move their end in. Motion with Platzkuma. Go with it. An inside zone with Bonatti for four yards, I guess. Three to four yards. Well played by the defense. Yes. can't get to the linebacker in the double team right. combo. They need two guys to move the defensive lineman and then the linebacker comes in free and, cl and cleans up the play. So it's second and 12 on their own 21 yard line. On the left hash you go trips to the right. Looks oh, like they free draw play. offside so they can and they're going to Kyle. launch it and he's open. Up, there up, we up. go for a big, 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 big play. Big, 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 big play, and, and always. Sean says, if you can do it, I can do it. So up for the, just beat him off the, off the start. He just, whoop. Yeah, it was outside, him. offside, yeah. and then he just ran right by him. Maybe the, maybe the kid hesitated, but and perfectly so, thrown ball. So Matt Marillo jumped in offsides. Sean Sheldon was using the hard count, and then he just, So they pick up chunks of yards. Yeah. Jacob Boy can only make a, a touchdown saving tackle. <laughs> so now 
we're still thir three minutes, three minutes, 50 seconds. We're really close to the, go to the end zone now. So the Raiders are first and 10 on the 15 yard line. They're checking in with two running backs, split left, two receivers to the left side. So both running backs are releasing, but there is no receiver. It looks like there was a miscommunication. Miscommunication between Kyle and Kyle Callahan and Sean Shelton there because Kyle looked like he ran his route a little deeper than Sean expected him to. Right. So now we go back to bring in another receiver. So. Second and 10, still on a 15 yard line. We go three receivers to the left side. Looks like it covers one, covers zero look to me. So they're gonna bring the pressure again. So they bring the backer they come. off the edge. They got Platskoma open for a... You live with the blitz and you die with it. Bonatti picks it up, Sean. Yep. Left of your screen. Yep. There's Bonatti picks down. out the blips, and there's Platzkoma running in the, the line, uh, the into the flat, yep. route into the flat, and then picks, picks up, up yards. It looks like he's picking up a first down, so it's going to be first and goal on the three yard line. All right, so it's a holding penalty. As decline the force, defense. you take the play. Fine, so we got a first down. So it's first and goal from the three. Yeah, they, they, so speed-wise, it's not really a problem. Uh, up front, maybe a little. Uh, it looks like sometimes they can I think can't. they adjusted to it now. Yeah, the they, first quarter is a little, they, they, you know, the, the, the Benedictine kids, they come off the ball really quick. But the Raiders adjust to it, and they're fine with it now. So they got a bunch formation to the right. Motion, Adrian Platzkoma going yeah. in and out. Some man coverage here. Hey, yep, oh, here they. comes a blitz. Kai would have been open. That's Adrian Platzkoma, isn't it? Cards down here. Okay, then it's Adrian. Isn't it? Yeah, five and six are really hard to. No, I think it's Kyle though. Could be. So he missed him, overthrew him a little bit, but he was under yeah, pressure again. Yeah, that's Kyle. So there's another defensive holding. So that tells me they're having issues with the speed. If they hold the guys coming off the line of scrimmage, eligible receivers, then they're beating them. So we got first and goal on the two-yard line. Trips Three to shoots field. to the right. Bringing the blitz, running the speed option. There's a flag down again. Sean puts his head down, doesn't get in. Yeah, could have pitched it, but I think he's just a little greedy on this one. He'd just go like, yeah, I, I don't score know if I, I don't know if I would have pitched that because it was covered, but. Oh. So there's a chop block here. So chop block, one guy high, one guy low at the same time, two, two uh, adjacent linemen. Let's see if we can find it. So there it uh, is. There it slipped. is. So it's actually accidentally. <laughs> he slipped, yeah. Shaw slipped. Shaw Sebastian slipped out, and then the guy fall over. I mean, it's a chop block. If yeah, because the other guy touches way. him high, right. so yeah, not, so. but it's not intentionally this time. So, but it is 15 yards. That's what it is. And, yeah, it and gives you some room to throw the ball, though. First down. You got time. All right, two backs. Pass it again to Flyage now. Kyle came back to try to block a defender. So we, it's a gain of about uh, two yards. He dumps it off to Philip Fleitch. Well, Kyle kind of blocked the grasp. Well, it's all right. So there you go, we got second and goal from the 15, right hash. We got. Three receivers to the left side. Dropping back to pass. Got a little trouble again. Throwing the out to Adrian Platzkoma. Complete it. Gain of about six yards to the left. I got third and goal 
on the nine yard line. So number 18, one. Brighton Gibbs is the cornerback to that side. He's, he's, got, he's got his hands full there. With Platzkomer coming out every time. So you got three receivers to the right. Looks like a blitz again. There's no safety deep. So bringing the blitz, throwing the vertical. And the flag here. Looks like a pass interference. There's the defensive holding again. Defensive holding, pass interference type of deal. And the flag came out immediately. I, yeah. I don't think the ball was thrown yet. It, oh, it's it against. Like offensive push off, huh? Okay, interesting. Fine. Sure. They're closer to it, so, so I don't argue with that. So. So the referee's going to check if they want to decline it. They will decline it. The Ravens decline it. So they call an offensive pass interference on number 15, which is Simon Unterreiner. And take another look at this. Some man coverage here. Oof. Can't really tell. I don't know. It's kind of like overthrown. Well, we got a field goal try. Yeah. Pichelmeyer, and it's good. Pichelmeyer puts up another field goal. So it's going to be 13 to 7. It's still a one scoring game. Thomas Pichelmann. All right, so we got one minute and 31 seconds. So we'll see how the Ravens will handle a two-minute drill on, on the very next drive. So question and answer, again, uh, make sure to ask us questions and we can answer them. So post it on a football, uh, facebook.com slash Raiders TV and ask Flo and Tino and we'll try to figure out an answer for you. Yeah. One and a half minutes to halftime. Ravens to receive the ball. So Tino, it looks like the Ravens are very, mo most comfortable with the 21 personal pro style pin and pull kind of like concept. And now if you go two minute drill, you can't really do that. So you think they're coming back with spread and try to, you know, like pump fake a screen and then throw it out there because that was a I could, have, I could imagine they that they want to put, put one in before halftime, but they might throw a long one out of 21 to get down the field and then come with spread. So there you well, go. Let's see. 18 got the return. He picks it up, and now he goes. There's a block in the back by number 23. Flag's already there. Yeah, but it's on. Gago Hofmann got blocked in the back, and it looked like he landed awkwardly. Because he was he was looking out for for 23 is Will Argana, the linebacker. Trainers right away. We'll see. There it is, blocking the back. It's still Ravens football, and they got a first down. So there he comes, Logan Harris. The one receiver with the big, big, big play is the returner here. There, there's yeah. the block in the back. Tackle made by Philip Maga, the one of the captains and one of the one of the players of the decade for the Swarco Raiders to roll. And here comes Schaefer Schutz with the spread, four receivers. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting because I think that's one thing their head coach uh, Wilcox definitely wants to see. His next year's quarterback in a two-minute drill and he got sacked and it looks like his safety is was he in the end zone no nope. there it goes max Wilt, but ball is on not the a one safety. yard line they've, now no they've they spotted the ball on the three which is interesting to me well he stepped up See, first so. so he's going back here yeah okay so no, it's the forward progress yeah. yeah that's a good call So now they're backed up. Still in spread. They no, they're know. not. 21. They're, they're going 21 personal. Now I think they're kind of like, the whole approach changes. 
You know, when yeah, you, just get out of there and get. <laughs> hey, you got a decent, you got an excellent punter, so just right. get him, give him some room. So now the Raiders will take the timeouts. We'll we'll try to get another field goal in, maybe. So there Schutz again, keeps the ball himself, right. just barely makes it out of the end zone. But. It looked like there was some some miscommunication, some something with the handoff going on. But Maga the Philip made it made a good play here. Schaefer Schutz just made sure to get out. So make sure to follow us on Facebook.com Raiders TV, and there are more more to come. There's like Twitter as well. So if you got Twitter, you can tweet twitter.com slash Raiders TV stream and then there is a YouTube channel of course as well it's uh, youtube.com slash Raiders TV channel so if you if you like all that stuff go check it out and watch all the stuff we want to thank uh, connection for the for everything they do for us Pilgrim Film and Eka Media all these guys are helping for the Raiders TV production so a big big shout out to these people all you guys on the roll call couldn't see this if these guys wouldn't work so hard thank you all right we got third third down they run the ball out try to get some yards and they do and they do they brought it back to the very first spot so it's going to be fourth fourth now, down Mr. and Nyhart is slow getting up oh yeah he got a little bit there. Yeah. Uh, he's holding his foot. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe twisted his ankle when he went down. Couldn't see it. But he's walking off, so I think he, he'll be back. He should be back. Yeah, hey, I got a tape job. It's very, very, very important that these guys. I mean, it's a long trip. They, they, sh they gotta have fun and injuries. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Yeah, but I like it to see. Look all I, that I, I like to watch him. I like watching him play because this kid's shifty. Yeah. He makes him. You've been a running back yourself. You can you can tell how he makes things happen with moves and cuts and. Right. Now I, I think their offensive coordinator is, is, is relying on that on that person because he's making something out of nothing. So now Ravens are backing up, putting out their punt team, trying to get a very very good field position. Back to return is Enrique Sebastian Martini. Sebastian Harris, the punter. Oh, oh ho, ho. they're taking a safety on this one. I, I don't, don't think, that think was on it purpose. was on purpose. No, no the center got a little excited here. Uh. Because the, 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 safety, the, the snaps before on punt were perfect. Yeah. And they were so quick. We're not used right. to that here. He just got a little anxious. No. Uh, it's interesting to see. I mean. Uh, he dropped his head on that one, and then your butt goes up. When your butt goes up, your arms have a longer range in the back. That's why the ball flies over the punter's head. If you pick up your head the moment you snap, your butt comes down. Your arms don't have that range, and that's how you prevent that. But, hey, okay. Two more. Yeah. So it's 15-7. It's still a one-score game, although we're seeing lots of, lots of action here. So now they got a safety punt it, or they safety kick it. So the Ravens are, we'll see if he's going to punt it. I mean, he's allowed to. Yeah. So. And we got 25 seconds and then halftime and we're off. We're going to take a break. You're going to see the Raiderettes and you're going to see a little uh, video from Sean Shelton, Tobias Bonatti and the kids. Um, working with the kids, working with, with the, the youth program. And that's, that's a pretty nice story to watch. So enjoy that and we'll take a break. But first we're going to wait for the first half to complete. So now they got it. Referee's got to get ready. Punter's going to tell him that he's going to punt it. Yeah. All right, so now they know. Good. Which was expected because he doesn't really look like a... Well, he sure knows he how to more, punt, especially more comfortable he doesn't with the punt. have any pressure. Okay. And this is not a good one. So and there it's still go. good. It's he's still great. He's returnable. And I'll go, go, go. Martini. He got a gap. We need to get in field goal range here. Okay, so it's... It's going to be right around the midfield. It's, the ball is going to be on the 47 yard line. 47 That's of the Raiders. We've got 20 more seconds. Yeah. So and he can take a shot. I finally get to see something because the sun's so down. There you go. So Enrico Martinez. Good blocking by Bonatti up front and by. Who's that? 20 was. Pilga, Pilga. 
Bill gets team on. Good job. And then if, if Vincent, Vincent Müller would have kept going and looked for work, then it would have been even more. <laughs> so Raiders coming out of trips again. So maybe they come and uh, they, they try the four vertical and hit number three, Adrian Platzkuma, because that's the work before. So here it goes. Huh? Almost had him. At him. He looked a little bit late and it, it, and it was surprising that he wasn't ready for the ball that a little bit earlier. So it's second second and ten. They they only wasted four seconds with that one play, so about two more plays to go. Raiders still have two timeouts. That was a little hoppy. Enough time. And complete to Kyle Callahan. Now they're gonna take it. Now the Raiders are gonna take a timeout. Ball is on the 34 yard line, 33 yard line. So you see, there is time. Protection Sean Shelton, he, is good. Good protection. Yeah. Now he's. Then he buys time on top of it. And Kyle comes and steals it. Gets as much as he can. And Raiders are taking the timeout. So again, question and answer. Uh, you ask us questions, we try to answer. Put it all on Raiders TV at Facebook, facebook.com slash Raiders TV. And we'll try to answer all the questions. Here comes the field goal try. Okay. So we got eight eight seconds. That's a field goal try for 50 yarder for Mr. Pistolman. And nope. it's short. Nope. Missed it. Short from Thomas Pichelman. It was a very long try. But there's three three seconds left. Three seconds left for that for that offense of the Ravens. So my question is, why wouldn't you take a timeout when you're knowing that you're kicking a field goal? Why wouldn't you take a timeout with three seconds left in the game and then kick the field goal? That's one thing I don't understand. But it's up to the coaches. Maybe they wanted to ask Mr. Pitchman if he's sure that he can make that range. You know, give him a little time to think about it. Here comes Jacob Custer. All right, so now they'll they'll try another play. They go prevent, Raiders got three guys in the end zone. Which already. <laughs> already, yeah. Uh, maybe that's why they did it. They tried to get, you know, the prevent stuff. Now there's a the rabbit here. Go try to kill the rabbit. And they did it, so. Yeah. So now they go in halftime. Maybe that was the reason. My, maybe they go like, hey, let's take a timeout with eight seconds. So we kick the field goal, they oh, get fine. another play. So we can practice a prevent defense. All right, so. Hockey day, the guys give us yard stats again. Okay, total yards, Raiders are ahead, 265 to 134. Passing yards, no wonder. Passing yards, they're, they're ahead as well. But now the Ravens got some big plays. 11 first downs to five, that's what, yeah. The Ravens got some big plays that kept them in the game. What's very, very, very interesting to me too is like the third down conversion ratio on both sides is not very, very efficient. Yep. Because you got you got one out of five third downs got converted. So that's not not ideal. Uh, rushing yards, I mean, established a run play a little bit more, but like it's it's tough on that defensive line to get some movement going and like you said before, to go second level, get up to the linebackers. And then passing game is not in. They had a couple of long ones. Four right. out of ten is not too well. Sean's, Sean's got normal numbers for him, 17 of 29. Um, yeah, that's all right. Yeah. So, as we said, you got some Raiderettes coming up here now, giving a little show, and then we got the little story about Sean and Tobias Bonatti with the, with the junior program. Um, number 14 is running to the locker room, so he yeah. looks fine. He'll nice. be back. That's good. the good news. Uh, we'll come back with answers to your questions, hopefully, huh? Yes, so enjoy the halftime show. Make sure to get some, some drinks for the second half. It's gonna be exciting. And I'll see you, 
See you later. Enough. See you later. God, it was awesome. The first time I got my name called from the tunnel, I was like, "Holy crap, this is it! You know, this is this is legitimate. This is a this is a great thing." And and honestly, I get that feeling every time I run out. You know, it's always like the first time. And Servus. I'm Sean Schoen, quarterback of the Swarco Raiders T-Roll. Uh, I was actually living with two former Raiders, uh, Jason Taylor 
and John Clements. You know, I always said that I wanted to play at the highest level I could, and specifically within the Europe where I was at at that time. And and they both just said, well, if you play European football, you probably know who the Swaco Raiders are. So it was a, like I said, it was a pretty quick decision. Sean and I talked once or twice, and I talked to Lee several times, and and uh, it was like, yeah, let's do this. And so it was a quick decision, and then once I was here, uh, it's funny comparing it to Finland and, and France, I felt much more at home here. This is more of my type of setup. Innsbruck is the small city feel, and, and the two Orient people are much more in line of how I act and the way I, I, I think things and view life. And, and so it's just, a, I think it was just a natural fit, and I felt at home very quickly. You know, it was funny last year going into camp, almost everybody knew where everybody was going to be. You know, we, we knew the team. You know, there's a lot of guys fighting for positions. There's a lot of guys fighting, fighting for playing time. And that's what makes these camps fun and exciting. I read a book by Jim Tressel, who was a really famous coach in the States for Ohio State. And there was a quote in the book that I think I really I have tried to carry with me. It's something that I try to live by, and, and the quote is, "People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care." And I think that really applies with the Raiders really well, and especially with the team. You know, this team isn't gonna care how good you are at football or what you know about football until they know you. All you want to do is win, because that's ultimately what the team wants. So that's a quote that I really tried to carry with me in all walks of life because I think it's, it's first of all, it's very true and uh, important, important. And if you want to be taken seriously and you want people to listen to you and respect you, you got, they got to know you care about them and ultimately you care about the, the main goal and that's, that's being successful. To say if I, I hadn't met Lisa, I still wouldn't be here and do the things I do, I, I'm not sure, but just from a life quality standpoint, it's improved things dramatically. You know, to have people here that really care about you, like Lisa's family, and they've done an amazing job of, of taking me in and making me feel welcome. Yeah, make this become my home even faster. And it's been, it's been a really wonderful thing in my life. Uh, yeah, definitely me, guys. You know, I really make all the rules and I, you know, what I say goes and, you know, it's really, it's absolutely me, totally me. 100% me. So, uh, yeah, I can officially say, like, Innsbruck is literally my new home, and uh, I really enjoy being here.
So Tino, we're back for the second half of the Ravens Benedictine and the Swarco Raiders game. Well, here are some answers. Yeah, we got one question, and that's uh, we're gonna look about. We, we're gonna look through the a catch that the, wasn't ruled a touchdown. Catch. Right. So we're gonna look at that. Get, let, look at that play. So he's dropping back to pass. And pick up the blitz. Right. Throws off his back foot. Good lord. So now that. So now. He's going up for the football. Catches catching the it. ball. One foot down. Now he switches his hand. Ah, okay. And then the seconds was here, so they ruled he didn't have control. So that's that was. And the that thing. is now from the slow mo. That's a good call. Right. So. So now going through the some questions. some answers. What do we have? Attendance today, four thousand two hundred. Nice group. What is the age group of the Raiders? This one. Yeah. I Nineteen mean, plus. <laughs> no, actually, we got younger kids too. So, um, but usually men's team, 19, usually, 18, 19 plus. usually men's team, you got 19 plus. But uh, there are two players who are actually uh, still allowed to play under 17 football. So they're 16 years old right now. So they're turning 17 this what year. What an experience! Yeah, I mean, there's it's Seton Valentin. He's an offensive lineman, and the other the other kid is Arono Kale Thomas. Both of them are like Thomas is at, at the Austrian national team from the juniors under 19. And he got, and he's going to the states for the after after the summer to go and enroll in high school. So he's going to play high school football and then try to to do his best to get a scholarship. And and uh, any and USA so. military kids or are they local guys? Well, no USA military around here. Right. So local guys. Yeah. Also, where are the announcers from? Well, I can tell <laughs> that the gentleman with me here, uh, Mr. Florian Grind, played for the Raiders as a junior, as on the men's team. Are you still the, yeah, you're the still all-time leading scorer, aren't you? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I guess you are. <laughs> yes. I can tell you what, I coached this guy This guy in the junior national team, and uh, he was a heck of a player. Now he's a heck of a coach for the juniors, and uh, yeah, he's Austrian all the way. I'm German all the way, couldn't hear it. Uh, started playing football in 1984. Played yeah. 15 years in the German league on a, as an offensive lineman. Went into coaching, coached in Germany, coached in Austria. Now back in Germany, working a normal job coaching besides that and having a lot of fun broadcasting games from all over the place and I really enjoy it. Okay, do we think Logan Harris, number 19, the receiver, could play for the Raiders? Huh, good question. I mean, definitely he could play for the Raiders. I mean, the thing is that in Austria and in Europe, there are different rules. I mean, in, in every country, you got different rules. In every league, you got different rules. For bringing in American former Pre college players, right. yes. So it's but like if he wants to play in Europe, there's a spot for him. Right. I mean, definitely. I, I definitely. I, I think. I mean, the, the the big thing is he needs to get exposure, and then he needs to be interested in coming overseas, and getting the experience to play in Europe, and then uh, I mean, it's always the matter of. You know, where is the need for the teams? Where's the need and how how, how much are you able, willing and able to adapt to what is asked here? Right. It's a different it's a different game over here. I mean, this is pay to play. Correct. Yeah, yeah this mean, is playing for pizza. You, you, you know, you, you, this is that, that's the book about it, pay to play. You don't get the most, maybe not only the most talented guys, but you get the guys who, who want to come, who want to play, and who show up besides the job. Okay. Um, Who's the oldest player on the Raiders? Because on the college team, Matthew McCullough is 43 years old at the safety position. There you go. And we were talking about well, young kind kids. Of, <laughs> kind of an old student. Uh, if the guys would have said a word, you still got a jersey and some pads. I'm coming out for second half. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, the oldest player for the Raiders. That's gonna. That's a little tough one. I, I think the age. Uh, Maybe Max uh, Bild. Uh, no, I think Power Philip. Power Philip Lush could be one of the oldest. He's around 30. Yeah. But and Max Bild is over 30. I know that. Okay. Well, maybe he is. I mean, yeah. Fuchs looks pretty old. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how old he is. And then is. the final question, do you guys like UCLA or UC USC better? Huh. Tough call. I don't, I, I, I don't care. <laughs> True. Um, I'm a Seminole fan, so I don't care what happens in California. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, good, good answer. <laughs> 
No, it's like UCLA. I know that uh, Coach Lee Rowland went to UCLA for 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 the fall once to to visit them about coaching, like adapt what they do and kind of like do the same thing over here. So UCLA, we got he got some some contacts there, and USC. I mean, I, I, I can't really tell a whole lot about that. I mean, both USC great is a, traditional yeah. college programs. And I have all the respect in the world for them. It's just not my team. <laughs> but I've been a Florida Seminole, Florida State Seminole fan since since I, you know, started getting around football and, and getting that. Okay. Because the only team we could see over here at that time was Notre Dame under Lou Holtz, mm -hmm. and they never threw the ball. That was the year with the national championship with Tony Rice, and you know they they hardly they had a Ragib, Ismail, the Rocket, but they never threw the ball. They always ran it, and they ran it well. And then you get to see Florida State, and they run all kinds of double pitch reverses, zigzag Jerusalem stuff. And I was like, hey, that guy's as old as Lou Holtz, and he makes it more exciting. I like them. Yeah. And that's how I made it out. I didn't really understand what was going on. And I've been an, an, an Oakland Raider fan since 1970 because somebody in my school who was a Raider fan gave me a T-shirt okay. with a logo. And I, didn't even, I, had, I had no idea what it is. Yeah. But I like the logo, and that's why when I found out and I came into football, so that's, yeah, I've been there. So there goes the second half. There goes the kickoff. Return by, looks like, Alexander Nitsnara. So he's one, just came up from the junior program. He's turning 18 this year. So I can always try to get some team, age team is really to it. really young anyhow. Yes. I mean, it's, it's always like that. I mean, it's the same thing. Like, like you said, it's all amateur. So all these guys got to work besides to play football. And yeah, and they go to class in the university, and they right. really have to go to class and pass tests. And I'm, I'm just saying this with all respect to you, but we know that there are a couple of colleges out there where the guy that's pro football with an education in swimming pool management. Okay, okay um, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, so, okay, it's first and 10. Raiders are on the 20, they swing, they throw the ball out to Bonatti, breaks one tackle and gains about five yards to the right side. So Raiders coming out swinging again. Yep. Bring the end inside again, no. Fuxa picks it up. The yep. linebacker hesitates on the blitz and then yep. Sean throws right over him. Yep. He breaks like two tackles. Right. If he learns, if he learns, he's still running under his shoulder pads. If he learns how to run behind them, That's he's gonna be a force with that body. But hey, he's young. I'm, I'm, so I'm, all right, we go, ten per, uh, we go trips, trips to the left. Pass again, bump, pump fakes it, completes it to Callahan for the first down. Sliding catch. And they're throwing, every time they throw the ball over the middle, it's one of the hashes where they complete it. Every time. It's been Plutzgomer all day. Now it's Kyle. Who's coming out there, he pump fakes it to the flat, comes back it's inside. Kind of a, it, it's, a, it's a seam flat combination that they run. It's hard to cover. It is. I mean, they, 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 is. they adjust on the run. That's a well thrown on ball. Depending Although on what the defense is giving them. Yeah. And Raiders are in split backs. Motion, Adrian Platzkuma. So Adrian, they're going to put him. And, and he throws it out to Bonatti, who waits on the football, cuts it in, goes, stays on his feet, gets pushed out of bounds after he got the first down on the Ravens' 34 yard line. So a great gain, great play from Sean to buy again buy more time to get to find some open receivers then checks it down to Toby who was waiting out there and he makes the best out of it it looks like they have a little hard time with the footing here on the grass because yep. a lot of guys slip in here all right Raiders are set motion Alexander Nitsinata go inside zone here flag down Toby got pushed back and that's the thing, what you were saying. He, he's getting pushed back because he's running a little bit too high. Too upright. How too old is upright. he? 19? He's 18. 18. I yeah, mean, so. he's turning 19 this year. Yeah, but come on. I mean, he's got some time to learn, so. Mm. No, but that's one thing that's kind of like his, his he, thing. He, 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 he gotta, stays he, upright. He, he might get hurt one day but, you're running like that because yeah. somebody's going to lower the boom on him. And I hate if any player gets hurt. They call it a false start. 
a false start here. I can't really see who it was. I think it was right. Foxal. He, he kind but of it's, it's first and 15 on the 40 yard line. Two receivers each side. They bring a backer off the edge. They, now they got a little bit too Sean, so he was un, uh, not very precise with his passing. Overthrow, overthrow. Uh, so we have, a, on this one. we have a nice little battle going on since since the second half now on the left side of the Raiders offensive line with Michael Habiti and Mr. 99 Matt Marillo. Yeah, I they're think that's really it. they're really slugging it out. Right. <laughs> it's, it's fun to watch. It is. And then you got because Marillo played on the other side yeah. in the first half most of the time, but yeah, now and Habitin's just he's and complete to up fight again. So and he's only. He just graduated. He's he's up there. Last year he was so he's he's turning 20 this year. So he's pretty young nice as well. Nice little touch on the ball. Mm -hmm. Both hands under it. So Look at that receiver third and, as you cup third it. And seven. Third and seven. Third and seven. Third and seven. Too high press coverage. No blitz. Three man rush. Got time. Got a receiver Five. open, but it looks like a push off because there's a flag right around there. Right around where the break was happening. So it's it was a complete pass to Adrian Platzkoma. We'll see what the penalty says. Mr. Savicevic. Defensive holding. Holding defense, yeah. Again. Penalty's decline, take the play. No, so it's a first down, and the Raiders are in the in first deep Ravens the territory. 15. First so there you see it. He goes out yeah, for it is. Oh, it's the other one. The it's not the out roll. It's the out roll. It's the other rock okay. coming in that got held. There you go. Two receivers each side. There's no safety. Blitz is going to come here for off the edge again. Well picked, picked up. up well, overthrown to Apfalta. Yeah, he looked like he turned the wrong way. But so now the sun is set here in Innsbruck. It's finally cooling down a little bit. We can see something on our screen now, which kind of helps when we're trying to explain what happens. All right, so we got second and ten on a 15-yard line. Raiders coming out with 10 personnel trips to the right. So you got to press on the boundary. Man coverage here. Rolls it out. Get nobody really opened up there. A oh, Adrian beautiful. found a spot in the touchdown. Raiders. Adrian Platzkoma. And here, here you see a an experienced, relaxed, and very cool quarterback. Yeah, it was very smart though, too, from Adrian to just you know sit there, he find the coverage perfectly, find, the, find the gap, to sit down, find yeah. the gap because like as soon as he rolled out, there had to be one defender coming down to force him to throw with football. Yeah. And then Adrian was just looking for the spot, the soft spot in the defense, got open there, and it was a well, well, well thrown ball, well played play by the Raiders for the score. PAT is good by Pichelman. And the Raiders are ahead 22 to 7. Somebody just pointed out that Coach Wilcox from Benedictine surpassed Lou Holtz in career wins. Uh, I didn't know that, and congratulations, Coach Wilcox. So the snap was high. That disrupts the, the timing of the play. Now he's looking, but he, he never loses his poise and throws it in the only spot where, where his guy can catch it. And Adrian sits there and just waits for it. A great play. A wonderful great play. play. A wonderful. Smart young, young receiver complimenting yeah. the, an experienced quarterback. Right. In this, in this view, you could even better see the spot that Adrian chose yeah. to sit down. There you go. Kicks it off deep. And he fields the ball at the five yard line. 
Now he's going to turn on the wheels, but it was well covered by the Raiders kickoff team here. Didn't make it to the 30 there. So the Ravens are taking over on their own 20, 7 yard line on the right hash. So we'll see what they're going to come out. Looks like 21 personal. It's again uh, Schaefer Schutz as the quarterback. We go tight end right, two receivers to the left side, eye formation. Pass it out. And Schaefer keeps it himself, rushes it for about nine yards. Oh, you see a seven-man protection here. You got both running backs in. And Sh and and still got pressure and had to run for it. Play action pass. Steps yeah. up. Slings it up. But on the overthrown. Other, on the other hand, if you go seven-man protection, you don't have too Logan many Harris. people in the route, so it's easy to cover. I, I think that was that was the fact because they ran a corner and a vertical, like a bench kind of bench concept here and then they got everything covered and Schaefer just took it himself. Yeah, you had to because you don't have many right. you don't have many receivers you got out three there. Options. You got seven protection. So, right. yeah. So now you got third, third and short. Go I formation. I assume they're going to run it here. Yep. Going back to Nyhart picks up first down. Nyhart for the first 41 yard line. Good to see Nyhart back here yeah, at the game. Yeah, absolutely. Game. So you see this one, the tackle comes down, that's the guard seal pulls on the back out. Side, center guard tackle on the backside, seal, mm -hmm. and that's what gets Nyhart across. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good blocking. Right. So again, 21 personal, eye formation. Play action, full begin to flat. Had him open early, but now he got to run for his life. My guy that was there. Push him out of bounds. So again, play action boot. So here, fake it. Yeah, they stretch, Both they the, stretch. the stretch block, which is all nice. The problem is the backside end didn't buy it. I mean, was it and then he, yeah. It was a good job by Philip Pop here. Could have stayed a little more under control to make a proper tackle, but he, he forced him now to step up and then run himself. There you go, fullback dive here. For another four yards, make it a third and one. Where's that guy on the line? Where is he spotting this ball? It's not where the knee is, it's where the football is when the knee goes down. So you see here, the tailback goes out like a stretch or like a toss play. And then yeah, it's like a delay, right. delay so draw, or delay, delay comeback, delay misdirection. Then. They got third and one, let's see. Gonna come back with that. Oh, there you go, fake dive, pitch it out there. And it's close, but it looks like it's gonna be good enough for a first. Yeah, barely, but he made it. A little juke made it in the yep. end. So they fake the dive, pitch it, quick pitch to the opposite side. It was well played actually by Kenneth, Lowen Kenneth here to stay out there because usually, you know, third, third and one, you bring everybody in the middle and make sure you take yep. care of that fullback. And I think that's what they Yeah, they you gotta were be disciplined on. on the outside if you're one of the leftovers there. Right. Did a great job here. So first and ten. ISO to the left. And he's still on his feet, but now forward movement was over. Gain of about five yards. Tackle made by Margarita Phillip. So it's gonna be second and five. And that was Mark Mark Dornford, the running back now. So they switched him. So like we said, they, they brought 40 people. Everybody of Benedictine University had to pay for their own flight. So out of 120, these guys came. Just jet sweep to the outside here. Oh, there's a big gap. Yeah, but that was beautifully read and yeah. executed by uh, Logan Harris. Yeah. 
I think could this kid play uh, in this uh, for, I don't know if he played for the Raiders if there's a need, but I mean he'd be a legit import for a top team in Germany or or, or Austria. Yeah, man. So far, and there are more leagues hey. in Poland. There's Swedes, Scandinavia. There's all yeah. the, the Central European stuff. Play action here. Play action. Boot going. Oh, that was a little early here with the hands by Müller, ah. but no flag, so everything's fine. Well thrown ball running to his left, yep. thrown back to the right. Right. Got a big target with the tight end, DJ number 87. Robinson, yeah, 6'4", 292. He's releasing Overland here. Parks, Bo Kansas. I mean, you can't miss that guy, which he didn't. And you see, I don't know. Great defense here by Vincent Müller. So now they go. With 11 personnel, they got tight end right, three receivers to the left side. It's second and ten, dropping back to pass. Here's a stick concept. He's, he's running, running himself, again. and he's getting out of bounds. He should get the first down. No, they don't give it to him, probably. Or do they? We'll see. Yeah, they do. Which is all right. So. They go trips to the left side at a stick concept. The Everybody receiver, covered. The receiver slipped on his break, the number yeah. three receiver. So this guy was gone, and then take off again. Schaefer should had to, you know, get get it on himself. So again, a little delay because of the chain, I assume. So now the the Ravens come out again with the tight end to the left and trips to the field. with the stretch play here out of that personal running to the field side nice little cut up field to get the most out of that play Mr. Nyhart well read him there you go two three four five, yeah. five nice good blocking yeah it was a nice reach block but nice neat reach yeah. nice reach block by that's, 75 that's a, here that's tough for an offensive lineman a stretch play yeah. is really tough right. you got to be athletic to, to get that going so they stick to that formation, got a tight end right, trips to the field. And now they try to run it to the boundary side for a touchdown here. Well executed misdirection play with two double team blocks in the middle that sealed the pressure. Well done. Charles Nyhart. Mr. Igly Squiggly run around. Right. Gets it done. That was a great play. They were always, you know, like the the first couple plays out of that formation, they were always forcing the ball to the trip side, to the trip side, to the trip side. And now it was the first play to the to the tight end side, and then... Yeah, it's good play they calling. They set it up. Yeah. That was nice. All right, PAT is good. And now we got a new score of 22 Raiders, 14 Ravens. So... San uh, Vitoli is here, and we got a one-score game. And it's still... Four minutes in the third quarter. So the guys in the truck, give me that touchdown again. There it comes. There you go. Boom, they go. There Didn't you go. Pull. They got Vil to, who got sealed off. Yeah. Who was the only guy who could Excellent actually blocking make, out there. make the tackle. Well here. executed play. And Nyhart goes untouched. Pull yeah, around, got, pull around, he seal him. Get the tight end up second level for the linebacker. Yeah, it's nice. And then actually, there's no one. I mean, it's it's really tough. I mean, as a defensive end, you it see is. the guy coming yeah. down, you step down, and now you get hooked. So you get hooked, yeah. Hoy. Where did that guy it's come tough. from? Yeah, it's tough. All right, Benedictine Ravens ready for the kickoff. Enrico Martini deep there with Nitzelnara Alexander, both of them the returners. And 
kicks it off and it will land at the goal line. Enrico Martinez taking the ball out. Making two cuts and getting tackled at around the 20 yard line. Yep, number nine, DeMaria Walters. You see, here he takes it out. And then there were a little bit too many people there to, to make it a successful return for Enrique Martinez. Well, he had 84 Nitzelnader waiting to block some, but he never gave him a go call right. and ran right by him. And then Nitzelnader looks like, hey, son, you're not blocking anybody. <laughs> so I didn't even know he was coming. All right. Right, it's first and 10 on their own 21 yard line. Three receivers to the left, one running back. Running back swings it out there, Bonatti gets it. Makes a cut, got tackled, gain of seven. So right now, it looks like Benedictine Ravens, they have a little trouble with, you know, running backs coming out of the backfield. Well, because as soon as they come out, you know, they, 50 here, he, he, got, he gets, he, he has a blitz and they don't come off the blitzes. So as soon as they get they the blitz, they don't come off they the blitz. They blitz. They, they've been beaten in the middle of that defense uh, yeah. a couple of times with those deep throws. So they look at those now, something's got to give. And so as, as a play three. caller on first down, you want yes. more than six yards. That's ideal. And that's what Sean's doing well. Oh. See, look where he is in the middle. Hash uh. again. Well, we got a turnover this uh, time. Was, it looks like it. Yeah, I think. I couldn't see it from here, but it looks like the ball was dropped by Abfalter. I don't know if it was hit the ground before one of the Ravens could catch it. Can't really tell from that angle. I mean, the way the, the way the Ravens are behaving, it looks like they caught it. Now the, receive, the, the referees are discussing the play. We'll see what happens. Okay, so. Well, these guys are pumped. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a first turnover in that game, and if you got a close game, yeah. turnovers count. So here, so they, say, their number 80. they say it was a complete pass. He was un in possession, which is kind of a oh, tough call here. Uh, I wouldn't know from this perspective. So they say it's, he was in possession. He never had it, did then, he? Uh, the, 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 all right, that's what they were saying. I know. First he was in possession and, and fumbled the ball, and of course Ravens recovered it. Okay. Looked to me like he never had it, but so now Ravens are now that's a big momentum switch here, and there goes. It looks like the Raiders are taking it. Oh, okay. So it's a delay of game, delay of game. Yeah, so play clock it, was down. Yeah, play clock was down. So that's one thing where you really got to hurry all the time. It's like whenever possession changes, play clock runs and you got to hurry. Okay, so there you go. We go far, tight it on the right, go Jacob play Kester, action, and you got a receiver to open deep, but under pressure sacked by Philip Pop and Max Wilt. Max Wilt. Nope, nope, that's Padela Reinhardt. Yeah. The policeman. The hillbilly. The police yeah. officer That's got it. him there. He calls himself the hillbilly. All right, so you got the play action here. You got the two yeah, pullers. Yeah, you got the two pullers to again. Them a little more. And it's always with the backside where the pressure comes from. Right. I, would, I would maybe rethink that concept. All right, so great play by the defense here. And the receiver on the left, Jenkins, he was open. Tyler Jenkins, he was open for a second. We never really could see that. Complete pass, complete to nice the right. Ball from Cresta. Caught by so 19 Harris again. Harris Logan in. Harris. So Logan Harris playing a great game today. Catching a long ball, and he's looks like he's the most reliable receiver he got on him, or at least the one he at trusts the most. At least he's the, the go-to guy today. Right. So they go. 11 personal tied it to the right, two receivers to the left. Pass, dropping back to pass. Shallow concept, complete again to Harris. And then he slipped. Uh, 
Now we got fourth down and three yards. So decision time. But it looks like they're gonna go for it because it's really in between zone here. So they put the tight end to the right, three receivers to the left. Now the running back is lining up to the right, so they, they will probably throw it to the left side here. And there you go. Stick concept. They got a receiver open, break a tackle, and more. So Logan Harris, Harris again. Logan Harris. And that's a great catch. And a nice throw by Custer because it right. was a pretty risky throw, but he put it in the only place yeah. where Harris could catch it. And here they, they went they went with two outs because nice. it was man coverage here. And they just the broke the tackle. Down. And it gets run by. So now they got, now they go put the running back to the right. Now it will be alerted for the run again to the left side. And here it comes. But now defense better, lined up better. Stripped the ball, but he was down already. Okay. Patrick Pilger. <coughs> uh, the tight end's slow to get up here. Number 87, DJ Robinson. Yeah. Now you gotta get out of the game. I don't know, a little shaken up. Here you see the game tackle, and he just, okay, he was he well was down. down. He was, he was down. well down. Yeah. Okay, so we got the same formation. We got tight end left, trips to the right. Running back is left. So there you go. Stick, stick here. here. Comes the blitz. Okay. They're ready for it, Harris. Harris again. Make one guy miss. Gets a lot out of that catch. So he catches the, the ball in five yards and gain another five after the catch. So he he got himself a game here. He's got a day's work in. Now he gets a little break. Yeah. I mean, you fly all across your jet lag, and then you get to work all the right. time. But that's what he came for. Yeah. I, I hope he enjoyed I think, it. I think yeah. everybody's going to enjoy it. The fans, everybody. Because it's a great game so far. So they go back under center. Shift. Costa is under center. Counter play here. And he got the edge. And score. Touchdown. Ravens. Pin and, pin and pull again. Charles Nehart. Yeah, Mr. Nehart. Okay. So now they're going to try to go for two here. Yeah, tight end coming. To tie the game. Clock was running out. Third quarter is over now. So they got time to think about it. Or are they going to do the... No, they're going to play it before they switch yeah, sides. Yeah, I mean they... Yeah, I would. They scored. But they look like they're ready for it. They had their play ready. So you go 21 personal. Tight end is four. Same, same play again? No. Yeah. Got play action boot. Oh. And the pressure comes and nobody's home. Incomplete. Two punt conversion is not good. It was a little bit too much pressure for that play action on this one. Still, it's two, It's a two-point game and it's exciting. And it's very and exciting. Very well so executed. Here. Play action here. Here's the oh, pull. That, that's here a they touchdown. come. The full back on the block. My boy 75 again. And what it all made, Bader. what the difference made here was the block by the receiver. If the, the receiver didn't block that corner, I mean, yep. that's that's not a touchdown. That's a first down. Yep. But here you see, you can seal that guy. Boop. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's a well blocked, well blocked down there by the receiver. <laughs> a guard on a safety well, I don't know. Yeah. So okay, if, if third quarter number is coming. Yeah. So we got total yards. Raiders Thanks. are leading. Passing it all over. Yeah. But the scoreboard, because of that turnover, says a little different. I mean, they're still leading, but it's really close. Yeah, but you look at the passing yards for in favor of the Raiders, then you look at the rushing yards way in favor of Benedict team by right. 100. Right. I mean, they're a rushing equal team. Equal number of first downs, still bad third down conversion, and thanks to Hockey Data again yeah, thanks. for bringing all that in. Perfect. I got more stats from Hockey Data here. I got uh, Schaefer Schutz and, and Jacob Costa. Costa. Uh, because that's, I think that's very important to see their, di their difference because uh, Jacob is not allowed to play next season and, and Schaefer is gonna be the next go-to guy. So he had two completions. So he had two, two out of eight completed for 83 yards with a long 70, 75 yard pass with a fake button screen and then to, to Harris. And then Costa got a little bit more out of it. He got, he got 
eight out of six, so he had six completions. He looks he looks a little more poised, and he's a pocket passer. He doesn't yeah. pull the ball down and run. Yeah. Returned by Martini again? No, oh, that's no. that's Alex Alexander Achama here. Oh, yeah. uh, Alexander Achama. It's, uh, Alexander Nitsenada. Yeah. And there was a flag, a late flag yeah. coming down. So yeah, going back to the two quarterback thing with with Schaefer and 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 Jacob Kusta. I mean, Jacob Kusta got he was the starter last year. So he had last year he had 260 69 attempts for 157, and uh, Schaefer Schitz only had seven attempts for four completions. So that's probably why uh, Jacob Kusta feels more more comfortable with his offense. Yeah, you can tell it looks. <laughs> But they got to get Schaefer ready, and I think that's the, the whole mission of that trip, to get that quarterback ready to go for, for the fall. All right, Raiders got the first. They got called back. Now they swing it out. Unconsistent, a little bit overthrown to Tobias Bonatti to the left side. Going to be second and 10 on they the 20, on the 19 yard line. Covering the back out of the backfield. Yeah. I mean, now the pressure came up a little too to to Sean Shelton again, make make the throw not very comfortable. So here they go. Three receivers to the left. One running back in the backfield. They're going deep to oh, great catch here! Simultaneous catch, so you got to be offensive ball here, and it's it was a great. Pitch and catch by Apfel here. They go press coverage on him, and he just he just beat the press coverage and called the ball here. <laughs> Great play. Great play. Yeah, I mean Apfel and and Brighton gives the DB. I mean he was right yeah. there, foot step by step. Uh, it looks like the defense like to press press the single receiver whenever they see trips, and on this one they just took the advantage of it. Here they go, swing the running back to the right, and now it opens up that window for for Abfalter here. Yeah, he comes in a little curl. And right. So he's replacing. Single receiver side a lot. He did it, they did it with Platzkummer in the first half, and now they do it with Abfalter. Right. Same route. Now you see the, the linebacker now, instead of blitzing, he's covering he's covering up for, for the running back. But since he's covering up for the running back, that creates the, the window for Abfalter on the other side. To sit in and that's All right, so 10 personnel, two by two, two receivers left, two receivers right, second and short here. Single high safety. There's a screen play here, but well, well defended. And nobody bought it. So nobody so bought it. Well defended by the defensive line, and Sean Shelton had to do what he had to do to get the first down. Yeah. Still, that's a heads-up play to make yeah. the decision quickly. See you. Okay, screen's there not go. there. Great screen's play. not there. Pressure coming. I mean, that was a great play by number 90. Yes. He was aware of Jared Shepard. He was aware of gotcha. aware of that screen very much. Yeah. So that was a great play here. He took that away. The back sits down next to me. I'm gonna stay yeah. here. <laughs> All right, there you go. You swing out there again. Scramble. Oh, we got a receiver wide open by Adrian Platzkuma. It's complete. It's Kyle, oh, Kyle. it's Kyle Callahan here. But unfortunately, he stepped out of bounds. Stepped out of bounds. Six. But it was complete. He was wide open. Yeah, they, it's they, complete. But they, that's come on, that's six. I mean, they blew the coverage here. I know that Coach Lee is not amused. They lost the sight. Yeah, they, he, they he runs totally, right by him. Totally lost the sight here. And because of the momentum of of Sean taking him yeah. to the right, yeah, the I ball. Don't, I don't blame Kyle, but still. The, the ball get placed a little bit to the right too. So, all right, so we got a first and goal at the nine yard line here. Two by two receivers. Draw back to pass, swing to Bonatti and he got tackled by number nine. Well tackled here. No miss on that one by DeMaria, DeMaria Walters. DeMaria, if it's Italian. Could be Spanish. Could be Spanish. Could be English. Could be. <laughs> All right, there you go. So Raiders are bringing in another running back with Philip Vlaich. Lining up in 
the near formation, two receivers to the field side. Play action, Flyage wide open, missed the throw. Third and goal. Third and goal. So the running back 34 goes in the flat. And here you see the game speed here by number 16, Riley Ng. Right? So he saw that and he just accelerates to, for the fullback. And first he was wide open and then he just catch it up on him and, and got right there with the ball. Closing speed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice play here. So Raiders line up and trips. Blitz yeah, off the edge. Good. Picks it up, interception in the end zone. He takes the ball out. And still on his feet. All right, that was another. It's Kenny Hirschberger again, I think, 45. Or Sean forced that one. As I said last time also, there's, there's a quarterback named Brett Favre. I think he's in the Hall of Fame, or at least he's going there. Oh, it's Connor Walker, 46. I'm sorry. He goes in there with a slant. It, the Sean he wants didn't to force see this it to guy. Kyle, and he didn't see the linebacker. Yeah. He forced it in yeah. there. And he threw was it right to him. Connor Walker, and what a return. Yeah, it was a great return. I mean, you know, as a defender, if you catch the ball in there, you know, okay, you got five offensive linemen, try to tackle, and then. I get it. You got 36 yards. That's pretty good average. So now the Ravens are back on, on with the football. So now they go with a short hitch pattern on the left side. Complete for eight yards. Eight and a half minutes left in the game. So that drive will be crucial here. If I'm the Ravens, I'm melting the clock a little bit because you know Sean can strike in a heartbeat with right. his troops. So. And we know that the Ravens can melt the clock because they got a strong running game. So that's actually very beneficial for them here. So they've handed off to a fullback for a first down. Zach Renfro, the ball carrier. Another first down. So that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna take their time. They're gonna stay in their base. 21 personal. Right to the left, two receivers to the right. Dropping back to pass. Wings it to the running back. Caught it. And it looks a little awkward here, but got tackled by Kenneth Logan and Stanley Onokale here. Yeah, Matt Dernford, the ball, guy who caught the ball. Yeah. Hope he's all right. His knee kind of buckled a little bit when he went down, but he ran and trotted off the field, so it looks like he's okay. All right, so they go back to tight end to the right, three receivers to the left, and pass it. We'll stick here again, incomplete. Intended for number four, Sam Vitulli. A little bit too far to the left here. So we got third and seven now. Long six, seven. So they're gonna stay in their 11 personnel here. They'll put a balance here. They got a tight end right, two receivers left. Fullback is in the backfield as an extra blocker, it seems, play action. Got Bitulu crossing shallow, and he got the catch and first down and more. Face mask and on top. They put in a face mask, yeah, or a late hit or whatever. No, I think it's a face mask. Okay. Because it looked to me right from here that uh, he, he kind of grabbed his helmet because it didn't look like a late hit. Okay. I don't know. I mean, he put his hands on him. You never know. Everything. Good call. I have my moments, my son always says. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so they got the, the great play here, play action. Now they got. Blitz coming off the edge. Schuster the stands in. Here. Got the little crossing route underneath. And then right there. And the ref was right yeah. there, so. Of course. Now they got first and 10 on the 13 yard line. And it looks like they're rolling now. I mean, they found their rhythm yeah. now. They're. Shook off the rust and the cobwebs. There you go. Swing the Mr. receiver out there. Oh, nice move here. Nice little spin move on Sabre. Because he was there right right where he called the ball. And he made a, made a miss on a dime here. So that was a great little spin. 
Hook throw there. Sabre was there right now. Nice little. Hey, picks up five yards. Yeah, he got some moves. He lost four yards, but he could have lost ten. Yeah. It's like, you know, back like Barry Sanders, he made the most spectacular minus yard plays. <laughs> All right, going back to 21 personal motion. Play action, lopes it up, he's open, and keep his, keeps his balance for... Touchdown. Touchdown. A touchdown, right. okay, he scored. So first time this game, the Ravens take the lead. Right. So now it... Twenty-six, twenty-two. So they're going to line up for for a two-point play. Going to have two running backs and a tight end, twenty-one person. Yeah, but what does that give you? I mean, split. I don't know. Not much, but they run it fast. They got the two fullbacks in the flats. Yeah. And they got the well executed. safety slipping here. Well, the money was a slant arrow concept. Yeah, that's and fine. And they didn't really cover the fullback. Yeah. They snapped fast, their defense wasn't really ready. And then whoop, there goes the two points. Zach Renfro, now you got a Yeah, you got a six point lead. There you go, play action, and he leaps it up there to a wide open receiver who got kind of like lost in there. Lost in there. Mr. In the Harris again. And Harry's got it, yeah. Been there, had that. <laughs> it's not like it's a you know He came to play. <laughs> right. He came to play, so if you leave him uncovered, six you know. minutes left in the game. It's going to be interesting what the Raiders make out of this. At least it's a, I, I think it's a very entertaining game and there. it's fun to watch. There you see that flip. My guy that comes off the edge with the blitz. And now Kenneth Lauman was a little, yeah. a little sleeping there in coverage. So it was an easy, easy conversion for them. All right, so the very first time, like you said, Raiders are behind. And now they got to an answer. A short kick here bounces a little bit. Recovered by Nitsunat Alexander. And he's doing pretty well with his returns. Yeah, he gets to the 36, 37 yep, yard line. 37 yard line. That's pretty, pretty good field position, yeah. so. It's plenty of time. We got almost six minutes. So he got a little, needs a little time, and then he sees the gap and he hits it. Great play here. So it, for, for Nitsunat Alexander, it's the first time for him to play with the adults. He was a, he's turning 18 this year. So two receivers to the left and to the right. There he goes deep to Callahan. He's open. Got a step on him, and he's going almost for the score. Great pitch and catch here. He got. He just out around the corner, and a touchdown saving tackle by the safety. You see that? Pretty gutsy double move Pump here. Pump and go, yeah. Double move on the outside. And just runs right by him. And a touchdown saving tackle here by by Jacob Wise. But and now they got to score. Still, a lot of time to play. <laughs> a lot of time to play. Callahan, I think he checks out of the game now. Alan Shannon comes in, a little gassed. So motion here. Whoop. Speed option to Ponati. Lowers his pads and scores. Touchdown, Tobias Ponati. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. When he needs the tough yards, he gets it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's an experience. You can show yep. him that clip and say, son, that's how you're going to, if you run like that. You fall forward, you make. You fall forward, you score touchdowns, right. and you don't get killed. I feel happy for him. So that was fast. So, okay. So there's still enough time to play, so the Ravens can come back. So now we go, the Raiders are going for one point to get the lead here. Yeah, but two points doesn't give you anything. Right. A lower percentage. Yeah. So now we go. Raiders are yeah, ahead but again. 
by but, one point. But a field goal beats you so or so. If you go for one, or two, a field goal beats you. So why go for two? There you go, 29-28. There you go. So the first time you take the lead, it goes. <laughs> yeah. Nice little misdirection, Oop. and then they run the speed option. Go. Boom, lowers his pads, yeah, run over nice. this guy. It was well played, the whole thing. They, they, they put the motion over here to reduce that defender. You see that? Yeah. So get that defender out of the picture. Now yeah, you pitch they, off they the end. Keep him busy. Yeah, it's nice. And he ran right over him. Right. And, you know, he wouldn't have played much if, if uh, Sandro Platzkoma would have played today. So this is something yeah. that he's going to benefit from. Of course. I mean, you know, really uh, playing this whole game and getting experience yeah. against, against an opponent like this. Right. Is, is for him, it's it's very beneficiary, and, and I feel, you know, I, I feel for, for Sandro Platzkoma, but in the end, he's the featured guy anyhow when he comes back, so. Right. There goes the kickoff. Oop. There goes deep. He missed to missed the one all everything. Line. <laughs> and Harris tried to get it. Oh, missed tackle here again by, by Enrico Martini, but got blown up here by. Martini has a kind of a, Leads and missed tackles today, I think. Yeah, I mean, he's always going up, you know, you get one shot, try he's, to, he's you know, for try the kill to shot. Kill shot him here. Yeah, you've got you to be strong if you want to tackle a guy like Harris yeah. with, like that. Yeah, I mean, good advice would be, yeah, I mean, tackle a little lower. He tried that before. Yeah, take his legs out. But, but, but he drops one, his head then. One yeah. thing, one thing there is, he's always the one. He, he's always the first one by He's far always around the ball, yeah. Down there. Yeah, yeah. And now you got a, you know, you got a big, big open field tackle to make. And then if he disturbs him, like what he was doing here, he just disturbs him, so it's not going to be a big return. I understand, and, and I'm, I, you know, up. all the credit. But if he learns how to tackle, gee, that could be a weapon. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But of course. All right, so there you go. Now the motion receiver over here. So you got bubble here, fake the bubble, going deep. Don't don't bite on this that time. So he Mr. Cresto down. down there again now. Five minutes left. Clock is running. Pick up a four. Yeah, so it's going to be second and six. Uh, they got time. All three timeouts yeah. from both teams. Mr. Vitulli comes off the field. So it's one of the best games for the crowd this year. So far, so. Comes Pub with the pressure. Gets flushed out. It looks like a holding penalty here. Flag down. Got tackled by Lauren Kennel. But the flag is thrown right around the holding area here. Oh, holding Mr. offense. Mr. Custer has some wheels. All right, so he's going to be second and about 15. So the Ravens, they got to do their, they got to drive over the whole field in order to win this game. So they go 11 personal, they got two receivers to the right. Motion. Trips. Now uh, there comes the screen pass here. They got he got blockers in front of him. Oh, <laughs> some people got right. flattened there. Good, yeah. Good lord. It's they always a, they had a whole armada in front of him. Yeah. Well executed screenplay here. But it's not enough for the first down. But he's got third and well, third and short. So you got third yeah, and one. Third and very short. So they're still in their 11 personnel. They, they're not bringing their fullback in for, for a dive or something like that. Tied into the left, two, three, three, three right. Go stick concept here. Now he caught. Now he's caught it for the first. Tyler Jenkins for the catch. There you go. Nice thrown ball outside, so only the receiver can catch it. 
And Tyler Jenkins, he got some size. He's a pretty tall receiver. One meter 91. That's like 6'3", yeah, that's pretty nice. See? So we got a little delay again because of the chain. Seems like the chain is a little work in progress here. All right. So for all of your fans out there, right now it's about 1,000. Uh, the question is, who is the MVP of this game? So the most valuable player. Please let us know who is your most valuable player of this game and post that on Facebook and Facebook Raiders TV. Facebook.com slash Raiders And that's a strong TV. candidate right there. Mr. Nyhart, who ran the ball again, scored two touchdowns. So let us know. Post the name. Facebook.com slash Raiders TV. All right, so now the... After that great run from Nyhart, the Ravens are got a second and, and short, second and three yards to go. So that's a, a built-in quarterback draw here because they had the offensive line released up. And he goes for the, he went up for the first down, gained about seven yards. So they got You got Jacob Costa there, lowering his pads, trying to get more yards out of it, but good tackle here, a good stop, but couldn't stop him before the first down. Now they put the tight end to the right, to the receiver to the boundary. Play action, incomplete, pass intended to Jenkins here on the right side. Well covered by the Raiders defense. It's gonna be second and 10. See that here? You got the little play action here with the fullback. Yeah. Oh, he steps well up. Well protected. Steps up in the pocket. Yes. Just throws it low. Double coverage. All right. Second and ten. We tight end to the left. Three receivers to the right. Fullback is in the game as the running back here. Drop it back to pass. You go double move here. Hitching goes on it. All the sides overthrow. Throws it away. Yeah. Overthrow to the receiver. Well, 146 left in the game. As soon as the game ends, I'm gonna head on. I gotta head up to the other side, and we're doing a little press conference kind of thing. It's coming on stream, so hang around if you want to hear your coach, your quarterback talk. But I want to take this minute, Flo. It's been the first time for you doing this, and I must say it was a little bumpy in the beginning, but you did a heck of a job. I enjoyed it, and <laughs> I, I appreciate it, and I, I'd be happy if we can do it again. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd you guys, up people out there, give him three. He did a good job. You could have told me before that they'd take a timeout. I wouldn't have rushed it in. <laughs> no. All right. No, oh, thanks for the compliment. I'm trying to do my best. It's like not that easy, but it's good to go. Sometimes, so again, sometimes it looks easier than again, it is. Yeah. yeah, of course. Again, Who's your we're MVP? asking you, who is your MVP? Who's the most valuable player? Let us know on Facebook.com slash Raiders TV. Put in the name would be beneficial if it's the whole name if you don't know the whole name then it should be some when it's you know make sure that give us the number the number or something to it as well and maybe the, the white or black jersey to the number yeah it makes sense one, so of, one of the candidates is cramping up right now mr harris he's on the sideline getting taken care of but he's yeah. all right so just make sure let everybody know who's your mvp of this game One forty-six so, to go. So right now we got we got a whole lot of Nyarts here of the of the voters. And of course Apfarta is in the mix. Callahan is in the mix. Now quarter stepping up. Got a boop. There you go. Uh, nice little hit here. Don't run into Philip. <laughs> my guy the Philip. And that's one of the player of the decades here. You don't really want to hit this guy. Yeah. There, that's why they invent the slide here. Son, what's your name? Thursday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. That was a nice little hit here. So it's fourth and two. So that's the game. 
That's the game right here. Money Not play. taking a timeout. Throw it complete for the first. Okay, they're, they're, they're still alive. Game is still alive. So again, the safe, safe shot, the shallow cross with number four, Bituli. Complete. And now as soon as the play is set, the clock's gonna run. Oh no, he steps out of bounds, so everything's good. So you got time. Motion receiver. Oh. Fake the bubble, going deep. He got a he got a step. Deflected by Shield. That was a great play by Shield Martin here. Great play by Shield Martin. Got a little underthrown here. But he had a step at the beginning. Yeah, again, good protection. Throws a nice ball now. That was great play by yep. Martin Shield. He got it a up. beat. Couldn't see the ball here. Was just watching his hands. Just watching the hands of the receiver. Hands come up. His hand went in there to interrupt the pass. So, okay, we got second. That's second and 10 when the Raiders 40. Quarterback dropping back, back to pass, throws it, incomplete. Went through the hands of Vince Washburn. Third and 10. There you go, a little flash fake here to the left side. And then went through his hands, was a tough catch to leave his feet. And now the crowd's going wild. So all 4,500 people here are going as loud as they can. They know it, the whole game is on the line here. Third and 10. Drop back to pass, throws. Complete, got tackled short. Short in front of the first down. And the receiver is down here. Looks like he's cramping. I don't, can't really tell. He's down at least. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cramp. It's so there you see, you know, the, the, okay, going back here. Dropping back. Get, had to step up in the, in the line. Barely got rid of the ball, yeah. Then. And here he's cramping up. Uh, that's all right. He'll live, so that's good. Yeah. No worries back so home, Tyler kids, Jenkins okay. Tyler Jenkins caught the ball. Got a little crampy here. I mean, that's one thing. It was really hot the whole day. And with all the traveling and all that stuff in their feet, in their legs, it's just a matter of time. And especially like that, the game is very competitive. <laughs> Ravens took a timeout here too, so they can you know, have a chance to talk to their players. Here he is, coming off the field, he's all right like to see that get some water all right fourth and one now money down again the game is on the line right here the defense gonna stop it that's the game and the fans know it the players know it everybody knows it quarterbacks on the center I formation, wide receiver goes in motion. And they go with the ice power play here, and he's, oh, oh. oh he fumbles up a football. Mr. Nyhart keeps it alive. And it's a first down. He refuses to Whee. stop moving his feet. Yeah, Nyhart, that Runs was through a, two tackles, drops the ball, and it bounces right back into him. Let's see it here. They go with the power again. He runs away from that one. So he now he stays still on his keeps feet. going, and he drops the ball, and is fortunate that it bounces right back right. into him. So Ra Ravens are ready to snap the ball. Quarterback got to keep it in the own. Gets out of bounds, gains about two, three yards. Steps out of bounds, though, so the stop at the clock is going to stop here. 21 seconds. 21 seconds. We're down to the wire. I mean, that could kick a field goal now. Yeah, the thing is still... You got I'm, another play, sure. Are they are they satisfied with their kicker? I know he can punt well. I don't know. 
Is he such a good field goal kicker? I don't know. We'll figure it out or not. All right, second and eight. They're dropping back. Incomplete pass. 18. Intended for Harris. 16 seconds, it says here. 16 seconds left on the clock. He had time. Well, well defended, covered. yeah. Well covered by Vincent Müller underneath, and then Pilger Sie Sieber was behind. 20, 24 was deflected it. it. Yeah, that's Vincent Müller. Fabian Seba. Oh, okay, yeah, true. So five and zero was underneath, and then you had Pilger Patrick behind it. So tight end. Again, it, He's it, looking for the tight end, and comes in enough underneath. time, and incomplete. So what do they do now? Twelve seconds, fourth down, fourth. Here comes and the field goal team. Seven, fourth and eight. Here they comes put the field on goal the team. field goal team. The ball is on the right hash. Ball is on the right hash. There is no wind at all. It's eight seconds on the clock. And it's a. The ball is on the 20 yard line. Yeah, it's so a, a Holt 37 yard field goal. 37 yard field goal. Snap is good. Hold is there. Kick is up. Mr. Vitulli. And the kick is good. Poo. Now look at this crowd. The kick is good. Man. <laughs> Sam okay, Vitulli. three seconds. I'm going to take this. Uh, thanks again, Florian. See you later. Thanks, yeah. Martin, for the thank support. I got to run over. Thank People, you. crowd out there, hang on. I'll be back on the stream with questions and answers with the coaches and the quarterbacks. Okay, see you guys. So thanks again for Gino von Eckert for the, his expertise. Very good guy. So now, there are three seconds left in the game. The Raiders are behind two points. So most likely, uh, the Ravens will script kick this one and try to get the clock run out before there can't be any play played by the Raiders offense here. And I think that's what they're going to discuss right now. So they're huddling up here for a little longer time. Uh, Enrico Martinez still back there. And then you got, you got uh, Nitsnada Alexander back there as well. There goes the kickoff, and it's just a high kick here. And there goes the return. Three, two, one. So the game is now officially over. And the Ravens are the first team ever to win a Battle for Tyrol game. And they made it very, very close. And it was a very, very high class game. And it I think one of the best games ever played here at Tivoli Stadium. And I think nobody nobody can consider himself as a loser in this one. It was a great game. Well shown. Football all over. You can tell that Europe don't have to hide. They know how to play American football over here as well. And yeah, it was a great game, great to watch, great game to commentate, great game to watch. Came down to the very, almost very, very last play. And tip my hat to the Ravens, did a great job. The interviews are coming up, so Tino Foneca is going to do the interviews downstairs. And here you see again the the yards total. The Raiders out past the. The, the Ravens here, they have more, they have, they had more passing yards. They couldn't establish a run that well, but in the end, uh, it was a really, really close game. And it was like 400 yards to 500 yards game, so very entertaining. 
says very very cool so thank you for for watching uh thank you for having me and stay tuned for the interview stay tuned for the press conference and be safe driving home wish you all the best and stay tuned for the interviews my name is Florian Grein thank you bye bye
Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention for a second? My name is Tina von Eckhardt, and I just had the pleasure of broadcasting a really entertaining football game uh, out there on the web TV. Um, over here we have Coach Larry Wilcox and Schaefer Schutz, the quarterback from the Benedictine Ravens, and Coach Juan Fatah and Sean Sheldon, the quarterback from the Raiders. Coach Wilcox, congratulations. Now after the game, it's all been said and done and played. What is your first statement? Thank you. It's on. It's on. It's on. It's on. It's on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. What, what would you say? What is your first statement now? It's all said and done. It's in the books. How do you feel? Well, it was an exciting win for our team, but I think it was a win for both teams. I, I know it's always difficult if you don't win because I've got enough of those too, okay? <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm happy for our players, and I have a lot of respect uh, for the Swarco Raiders, their organization here, uh, the quality of this program, uh, the quality of the coaching staff, the effort of the players, and I have a, a personal special uh, appreciation of Sean uh, who I've known since he was, I think, 17 years old. So uh, it was exciting for us to be here, and uh, but we're, it'll, it'll be a little more easy ride on the way home. Having said that, when are you going back? Uh, we go back to Munich uh, Monday morning and then uh, return to the U.S. on Tuesday. So we have just a couple days left, and, and we've really, really enjoyed our time here in, in Innsbruck. Schaefer, it looked like you took you a quarter to put everything together, like shake off the cobwebs and get all the rust out of the way. Um, they look a little more in sync because they're playing game eight right now. What kind of an experience was it for you out there? Um, you know, it was, it was a great experience, I think, for, for me, but as well as for our team. Um, there's nothing like playing with those mountains in the background. Definitely, we don't have those from Kansas, so the mountains were fan fantastic. It was a great experience. Um, you know, I thought, I thought when we started the game, like you said, might have had a few cobwebs we had to shake out, but I thought we started clicking at the end. Thank you. Coach Shu, as, he, as Coach Wilcox said, it's never fun to lose, but still a great game and a good team you played today, right? Yeah, we can. First of all, thank you for, for the great sportsmanship, and uh, that's a hell of a football team Coach Wilcox got there. And uh, we understand, uh, we, can, we know how to put it in perspective because we know they don't have everybody on board. We're mid-season, we don't have everybody on board. But I thought for the fans, uh, I'm here seven years, and that was one of the loudest days I, I can recall, and it was really exciting for everybody on the sideline. And uh, I thought it was really what we hoped it would be, a, a happening, uh, we're celebrating the game, which is an awesome game. And I thought that was exactly what we did on the field. The players, they played their hearts out. Um, and I thought it was a clean game, very friendly game, very tough game. And uh, you can't ask for more. And obviously we want to win, but if you want to win, you can't make uh, little mistakes. And that's, they, they just, we just paid a big price for it. You know, two turnovers in the second half make the difference. But at the end of the day, I think for everybody involved, that was a great, great football game. Doing the broadcast and knowing how banged up you are right now in the season, I had the feeling that a couple of young players really stepped up in the, today in a way that was impressive against this opponent. I, I, think, I think if you follow our team closely, I think our team is impressive the whole season. I mean, um, we've, we've been playing everybody tough. We are winning more than we're losing, and we lost 22 players from last year. So if you take that into account, I mean, everybody should be really proud of the Sparkle Raiders. And I'm, have, I'm mighty proud of coaching those young guys. I mean, we got 17, 16, all right, God is 16 years old. I mean, we have some young guys on that team. And, uh, and yes, I mean, there's no question. We're greatly I'm proud of those guys. That's the next generation of Raiders. And uh, they do the hell of a job. Absolutely, I agree. Would you, Sean, how was it for you playing against the college team? We talked before the game, and you said it's going to be the next step. It's going to be different. How was your experience today? Oh, it was a blast. And you know, uh, it's not the first time I've played this college team. Actually, my first college start, or I didn't start the game, but I guess I came in. My first college game was against these guys too. So I, I've been excited. I mean, I remember Coach Shu telling me in the fall that it was Benedictine College and how excited I got for, for sentimental reasons as well. And also that's I wanted to win that game. But um, you know, it was a great game and it was a fun game. And like Coach said, it was a great sportsmanship. You know, it was just a hard fought game and, and both teams made mistakes on either side and, 
and those little things added up, and that's what cost. Oh, that's what ended up factoring into the who won and who lost. But man, what an enjoyable game! What an enjoyable game to watch. I mean, on the sideline, I was captivated that last drive, seeing two fourth downs or so. I mean, it was it was really really a fun game to experience. Thank you, Sean. Um, yeah, give these people a hand because they entertained us well the last three and a half hours. Thank you, everybody, and uh, have a safe trip home, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.